Hello, everybody. I am Brother Luke. Welcome to this fun fellowship Friday night for the Church of the Eternally Secure. And I hope you have as much fun as I'm going to have tonight because I'm planning on having a lot of fun. How about you, Brother Cripps? Yeah. I, I, always, I always plan on having a lot of fun. I, I haven't been disappointed yet. All right. Because I've been telling some new people here about how much fun Friday nights are, so we don't want to disappoint anyone. No, no we do not. Yeah, I, I don't want to put any extra pressure on anybody, though, that, uh, you know, you have to be perform and, you know, so that everybody has enough fun. Maybe, uh -huh. I, ought to, maybe I ought to stop talking about it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All maybe right. set, set the bar too high. <laughs> Well, we've, uh, we're about 10 minutes behind the normal start time because we've been delaying trying to work out a problem. Uh, um, Sister Jen is not going to be able to be with us tonight. And earlier today, uh, I was talking to a brother that uh, you all know, or not all of you, but many of you know quite well. And um, uh, he's agreed that uh, sometimes if there's a vacancy, if, uh, if someone on the panel is, is out, that uh, he'll try to fill in. And he, he did this role in the past uh, quite quite a bit for us, too. And maybe he'll, we haven't been able to get the link um, uh, that we sent him to work for some reason. So, but maybe uh, maybe before the night is over, uh, it'll work out. But well, I'm talking about uh, Brother Steve, Brother Stephen, some may call him, uh, and uh, his channel is uh, Soldier for Christ. Uh, we are at war. So he's he's kind of been uh, he was at war, but he's been missing in action from CES for a while. <laughs> but I, I called him today and recruited him. I, I hope that uh, uh, he's going to be able to join us tonight. If not tonight, very soon we'll we'll have him back in the congregation. So uh, right. let's keep our uh, let's everybody say a prayer that uh, somehow we get this technical issue fixed and he's be able to join us. Uh, all right, so let's say hello to everybody. Starting off with Brother Cripps. Uh, hello, that's uh, ex exciting to hear about possibly getting to talk to Steve again. Um, I did hear that he was around. Uh, wasn't sure he was going to be on tonight, though, so that would have been a surprise either way. Um, yeah, that's exciting. So uh, I'd like to say hello to everyone in the chat. Uh, and I'm sorry Jen couldn't make it tonight. She's had a long week, but I'm sure she'll be back again. She'll be listening, I'm sure, tomorrow. Uh, to the broadcast, so I'm excited to have a fun time, and I'm raring to go. Raring. <laughs> Just like you like your steak. <laughs> Brother Cripps, hey. no wonder you didn't answer me. I was muted. I said to uh, yeah, Sister, like, hey. Sister Jen need some prayer, or is, is she just tired, or what? No, she's just tired. She had a long week. That's all. That happens sometimes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's maybe, have... honestly, maybe it was just too much fun. And she's just like, you know, I, I don't know if I can handle. Yeah. You know, too much fun really can yourself. wear you out. Yeah, it can. Yeah. It absolutely can. All right. Uh, Sister Angel, will you give a greeting to the congregation? Hello, everybody. I've got to say I'm really, really excited about uh Possibly, hopefully, prayerfully getting Steve to come on tonight. I haven't, uh, I haven't talked to him in a, in a, in a while. Uh, it's been, a, it's been, I don't know, like over a year. I know that, uh, you know, uh, I had his number, but then I got a new phone. My phone broke, and I don't think that uh, I've heard from him ever since. But um, it would be such a blessing. So yes, please, guys, pray, pray that we get this worked out. Um, I've been thinking about Steve lately, so. Uh, and I'm just glad to glad to be here, guys. I didn't get a chance to see the questions. Uh, I don't I don't know if Finn sent them to me, uh, uh, or or if I just missed them in our in our, our text walls, <laughs> or in my uh, in my in my uh, uh, you know message inbox. So, um, but so it'll all be uh, kind of a surprise for me tonight. But I'm just glad to be here. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, you know him, Steve, quite well from the past, Sister Angel. Uh, Sister Lisa, I'm not sure yes. if you've ever met him, but uh, I'm sure you'll She'll probably it. remember him when she sees yeah. him. Well, I, uh, I heard uh, Sister uh, Renee's uh, broadcast being canceled last night, and her message was that she was planning on having Steve on, uh, but they had to cancel it. 
uh, and it made me think, well, I, I haven't talked to him for a long time. I need to uh, put base with him. So we had a good long conversation today. Uh, and Sister Lisa, will you say hi to everybody? Yeah, I don't hear you, sister. I just heard her yawn. <laughs> I think it was her. No, you didn't. No, you did not. Stop that. I'm not asleep. No, I was on mute, too. Uh, sorry about that. I thought my mute was... Uh, I, I actually was very funny, and my timing was perfect, and the mute was on. When Brother Luke said, will you say hi to Barry? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord, beloved, the most high God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. How is everybody doing this evening? I hope everybody is having a wonderful and blessed week. Uh, I am still working on my recovery in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so some of us are going through and we know the struggle is real. <laughs> Spiritual warfare battle is for real, in case you didn't know. So um, thank you all for uh, all your prayers. I truly appreciate it. Believe me, going through some of the heat of that battle, I was feeling it. And I thank you. I felt your undergirding. I really did. There was some dark moments and I do appreciate it. And I thank you so very much. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Brother Ben. Yes, it's also uh, very happy to be here. I think we do have some good questions. Uh, Angel, I did send them to uh, everyone. Uh, and if you don't see them in your text, I put them in the uh, Hangout chat so you can look at them there. Um, I did also send Steve another invite. I sent him an invite. So, Steve, if you're listening, please look uh, for an invite um, for the Hangout and uh, hopefully you can join later on. But uh, I'm looking forward to the fellowship. Awesome. Yeah, okay, Steve, if you are listening, just keep on trying. Uh, we've done everything we can that we know how to do, so keep trying, find some way to make it work. I remember he, Steve was pretty good at technology. Uh, he was able to uh, do these live broadcasts in a truck. <laughs> no, hopefully not while he was driving. I think he, he pulled over and parked the truck. But he's a professional truck driver, so uh, in his travels, uh, he, he was able to make it work, even though he's traveling. So maybe yeah. that's a way of making this work. Yeah, he should he should be able to make it work. I just maybe he's just out of practice, hasn't done it in a long time, and doesn't know how to how to click on the uh, link. Yeah, <laughs> he's okay. forgotten how to click on the link. <laughs> All right, then let's look at the chat room and see what's going on in there. Uh, hello, Sister Heather and uh, Brother Kevin, Church for the Truth. Hello, everybody. I don't want to say hello to everybody. It'll take too much time, but blessings to all of you. Glad you're here with us tonight. And uh, I want to encourage everybody in the chat room tonight to uh, um, try to participate as much as you can, e either with your comments in the chat room. And if, you, if your comment pertains to the, uh, the, the subject that we're discussing or, or and you want us to respond to your point or you have a follow-up question that you want us to respond to put it in all caps that way i'll notice it and uh, we'll be able to uh you know uh, uh, interact with you uh, also don't forget that the link is posted on each one of these true false statements so if you click on the link you'll be able to actually go and vote and we want your vote to count so that we know how the congregation stands on each one of these questions i find it quite uh, not only interesting, but a, a wonderful thing that uh, on so many questions, we have a divide, division as far as uh, there, there's not a unanimity of, of, of minds where, oh, everybody says that's true. We all know that's true or, or false. But, uh, and yet, even though we disagree, we listen to each other's reasoning. And, and sometimes as we're discussing it, someone's mind is actually changed during the discussion. Uh, and that's a beautiful thing, I think, that we're listening to each other. Amen, anyone? Amen. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, brother, uh, uh, unless there's anything else anybody wants to say before we start the um, uh, true false statements, uh, let's go to the first question, Ben. Okay, the first question is yours, Luke, and it is our proposition, I should say. Um, true or false? I routinely recite the Lord's Prayer. And actually, this is one that uh, was somewhat of a surprise because it was last minute from Luke, so I put it on. Because uh, he's Luke. I mean, you can't argue with that. Well, oh. you can. 
<laughs> well, I, I didn't hear the, what you said. I mean, I, I, I suppose it was supposed to get a laugh, but I, I didn't really hear what you said. No, I was just saying that uh, I sent questions out previously to each panelist, letting you guys know what, what the uh, questions were going to be per your request. Oh, and, yeah. uh, but that this one here was not in that list because um, I think I you, you sent a question last week that I I meant to put on, uh, in the queue, but uh, it, I missed it. So I wanted to put one in first for you this time. So. Oh, okay. I thought you were maybe just throwing us some curveballs here. Okay, yes. so the, the question is, I routinely recite the Lord's Prayer, true or false? So everybody answer that question now. I'll go last. Uh, who wants to go first? I can. Okay, I'll go ahead. first. Go ahead. Um, I never do. <laughs> um, so now, as far as like frequently reciting it, you know, uh, I'll say uh, I haven't uh, I haven't recently, but I do uh, I do recite it, and also um, I, I I have a special fondness for it because um, it was the Lord's prayer that uh, that we said um, my friend and I the day that uh, a, a an entity manifested in my daughter's bedroom, and um, it was the same you know the same. Uh, demonic spirit that we've been uh, dealing with uh, uh, that was seemingly attached to my friend, my best friend. And um, it was only when we said that prayer, finally, uh, we both said it instinctively, even though we were unbelievers. Um, it, it was just that it appeared in my, my little girl's bedroom and she saw it and called it a doggy. That was just so disturbing. It wasn't even like a thought. It was like a reflex that my friend started to recite the prayer and I, and I, I, I started with her. And um, that thing never appeared in the house ever again. Um, I never saw it again. And this had been uh, something that uh, I, I had been seeing and other people. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was something that I'd been seeing on and off for two years whenever when she was around. And, um, and you know, Joel, my husband, he, he'd even uh, had an encounter with it. And he didn't even know about it because I didn't want, I didn't tell him. Um, so he didn't know that there was this thing that was attached to her and that she was dealing with. Uh, and uh, he's he's very skeptical, and he had sleep paralysis, and um, it's a long story. I've told it before, but it's basically like it was real. It wasn't imaginary, and this is when I, it, it, this pushed me over the edge uh, uh, to become a believer as opposed to being an atheist because um, we had tried to deal with this thing in every other possible unbelieving way <laughs> that you can imagine, and it, when it got the stakes got so high that it was appearing to my little girl, um, and she wasn't intimidated by it, which was the real creepy part, because it was like, in a, it apparently was showing her some sort of appealing form where it was, she was saying, a doggy, you know, that it, that was when the stakes were so high that something, you know, in my friend and then in me, like just knew to, to recite the Lord's Prayer. And that, and it worked. So for me, although I, I'm not saying that, that, uh, you know, Jesus was telling us, you know, this is the way to pray and you should always pray this way, like, you know, like a Catholic or something. I still think, uh, like for me, I, I really love it. And sometimes when I don't have the words, but I want to honor God, or if, you know, even for spiritual warfare purposes, um, I will say that prayer because of the experience I had. I'm very, you know, it's personal for me. It's not just a, a template for me. I, I really love that prayer because that was that was uh, that was the big uh, moment that uh, I finally realized I've been wrong about everything. So um, for me, I'd say uh, mostly true because I haven't recited it recently, but I have, I do recite it probably more often than a lot of people <laughs> do because it's, you know, uh, especially as a, as a, as a non-Catholic, uh, somebody that, you know, doesn't, uh, you know, I'm not into most people, most of us here are not going to be into real ritual and tradition, but that's different for me. That's the, that, that I have an attachment to it. And I, uh, I will never forget. I'll never forget that moment and, you know, in my life when that happens. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sister. All right. Um, Sister Lisa, what do you say? Oh, well, I'm sorry. One second, brother. I just, when you asked me, I need to clear my throat. Hold on one second. Yeah, that wouldn't have been good. <laughs> that wouldn't have been good in the microphone. Um, I would say leaning false. And the reason that I say leaning false is I rarely do it. So the only way to kind of answer it based on the <laughs> leaning true, not true, all that, I, I just said leaning false because I do it rarely. I have I actually just prayed it probably in the last literally 10 days 
once or twice. Um, but just because it came to mind, as Sister Angel said, when I felt like I really didn't have anything to pray at that moment yeah. in my understanding. And uh, also uh, in Matthew 6, which is where we find one um, example where Jesus talks about this, where he says that uh, when he he's speaking to the Pharisees and he talks about don't don't pray like they do because they're hypocrites and they want to be seen of men. I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he's saying. And then when you drop down to verse nine, he says, after this manner, therefore pray ye. Uh, so he's showing us the manner in which we should pray. But this is a beautiful prayer. It is an important prayer. And I know, uh, as Sister Angel is saying, I don't doubt that when she prayed, <laughs> the demons fled, you know, because she was doing so in light in the spirit of, of our Lord, in his light, the light of Christ. And she, like she said, she realized she was wrong about everything. Well, that, that's what repentance is, a changing of the mind. So, I, and I God didn't, you know, I didn't even want it to work. As I was saying, I was thinking <laughs> in my mind, this, oh no, if this works, if this works, I know what that means. But you're right, because I, I don't know, we, you know, my friend was never religious either, but it was this automatic thing. I do believe it was the spirit of the Lord helping us, helping me out of that situation. So, um, Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Listen, they, there have been people who have those alien encounters. And when they've spoken to believers, believers have told them, look, the next time that those demons or devils or those angels or those aliens that you think they are come to you, call on Jesus. And, those, and when they do, those entities yeah. disappear. So it becomes proof to them. Not only that Jesus is real, but that there's some kind of supernatural thing that is happening to them. So, you know, that is the witness of the resurrection power of Christ. That's why they keep trying to pull us off the name of Jesus. <laughs> so anyway, that that was my answer. I hope that was was good enough for you guys. So your answer was uh, certainly false. No, you leaning know? leaning false because I don't do it. It's not a ritual. I don't do it all the time. But as I said, recently in the last 10 days, I probably prayed it twice. Oh. Uh, as Sister Angel said, just when um, she couldn't think of anything in her understanding at that moment to pray for. And I just okay. remember what the Lord said. So I just started praying it and, you mm -hmm. know, remembering how beautiful a prayer it was. Mm -hmm. yes. But I don't do it as a religious ritual or anything like that. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, well, before we continue with answering the question let's say hello to uh, brother Stephen here he's in the chat room i said at least if we can't get you uh, on the panel because of uh, some technical problem uh at least join the the chat room and say hi to everybody so uh, oh, hey, Steve. Uh, he, hey, has he now. tried mobile has he tried mobile calling in mobile instead of his phone uh, his computer yeah that's what i was going to say too steve if you have a phone Download the Google Hangouts app. Sometimes that's more straightforward. Um, yeah, he usually yes. does use his phone. Uh, if I remember correctly, he's always used his phone in the past. That's when he was at the truck, but if he's home, he might be using yeah. computer. Yeah, okay. Hey, right. Steve, I'm so glad you're here, Angel. I, uh, I I lost touch with you, and I got, like, two new phones since then. But, man, I, I, I can't wait for you to actually be on the panel. I'm praying that, that you're going to make it in. Yeah. I'm chastising him. <laughs> you, know, you know better than that, Steve. You know how to get yeah. it. You recognize that voice, Steve? Okay. Uh, all right. So we had Angel and Lisa answered. Uh, Brother Cripps, why don't you answer the qu question now? True or false? Uh, leaning false. I do say it sometimes. Um, it is the way uh, before uh, uh, Christ was crucified that he told them how to pray. Of course, I feel like... Uh, it's a pattern to follow. I, I don't. I don't feel like we need to pray exactly that. Um, but I like it. I mean, I like the prayer. It's wonderful, especially the uh, the first part. You know, um, you're talking about God's holiness, and you're you're praying that His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I think that's never a bad thing. Sometimes I just pray that part because uh, I, I think it's uh, hugely important. And, and I also add. Uh, may it also be done in my life. Uh, it's just personal to me because uh, I want that. I want his will to be done in my life. Um, he knows me better than I know myself, and he knows what's best for me. Um, but the actual prayer itself, uh, no. Uh, in fact, I think some people cling to it too much 
Um, you know, the Catholics say it all the time. They cling to a lot of different stuff, you know, Hail Mary, full of grace, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's lots of things that they cling to, lots of ceremony and repetitiveness and all that. Uh, so, I, you know, not that I think there's a problem if anyone says it every day. It's not an issue. <clears throat> um, I had a great grandmother that had it on a plaque uh, uh, in the hallway, like next to the kitchen. Um, so I, I, when I was a kid, I remember I, my sister and I would come in the hallway and both of us would re recite the prayer. There's nothing wrong with it at all, but um, I don't do it a whole lot, no. So I say the leaning false. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, Brother Ben. Um, well, uh, first of all, I, I, I think the, the calling it the Lord's Prayer is kind of a, a, uh, an error because, uh, not an error, but um, in, not totally correct because I certainly Christ had never prayed it because it says, lead us not into temptation uh, and, and forgive us our sins uh, uh, trespasses. Obviously, he never did such any, any of those things. So um, and, and also, too, is that. Um, yeah, I, I, you're right. Uh, you guys said this a lot that a lot of people do. I, I think it's a wonderful prayer, and I, I have nothing wrong with anyone praying again. I think it's a beautiful prayer. Um, but yeah, when I was um, as growing up, when I was in Catholicism, that was something that they would repeat over and over again. Um, and I think even the Lutheran church I went to did it uh, routinely. And it just it just prior to that verse uh, or to that prayer, uh, he says, uh, "Do not be like the heathens who." Uh, you know, prayer in vain repetition. I mean, that's verse seven, and then verse nine is the actual prayer, or it goes right into the prayer. Um, and, um, and so, I, again, I think it, it, for that reason, also too, when I see read Matthew, uh, I think I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I think this might be the only gospel that contains this prayer. I could be wrong on that, um, but if it is, um, you know, Matthew is uh, thoroughly Jewish in nature, and his context is really uh, for the Jews, and, and basically explaining them to them, uh, hey, what happened about this promised kingdom? Uh, did God not keep his promises? And it's basically explaining to them, uh, them that are here, and uh, other people that are interested, like Gentiles, like, well, what, what happened? What, what, what went wrong? Well, they rejected the king. And so uh, when I read Matthew, the thing I try to keep in mind is that, you know, first Christ is kind of teaching, the first half of Matthew is about Christ keeping teaching that he's he came to fulfill the law and then he presented himself as the messiah or the king um but after he was rejected uh and and um put to death he announced that he would build his church or just, just prior to his death he announced he'd be building his church so in that sense the, the kingdom the law and the uh age of grace i kind of see those different dis dispensations I, I know i'm not a hyper dispensationalist but in in terms of different God dispensing different information at different time, uh, to different you know different peoples. I I, I do hold to that. Uh, I see that in Scripture, and so I see all the Matthew is that when you're reading Matthew, you kind of have to keep in context who he's talking to, and is he talking you know to the people under the law or uh, to the people as their king or uh, whether as their king either under the law or under grace. He's he's a king of both, and. Um, or uh, basically, uh, as someone who is, you know, basically talking to uh, believers uh, through grace. So you see all you see all three elements in Matthew, and I see all three elements of those in the Lord's Prayer. And I know this might be controversial because I'm some people might say I'm being too uh, traditional or rigid in my eschatology, but I, I only hold this position because I see it in Scripture, and um, they are, are different 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 views. But and each of them has their own complications. But I think I have satisfactory answers for all the objections, whereas I, I can't find answers for uh, other views. So, anyways, when I see "do not lead to temptation," um, I, I, I read some commentary where a guy said that uh, multiple scholars were saying that it's not really saying it would be better translated saying rather than saying "lead us not into temptation," it's more uh, more accurately translated "allow us not to enter temptation." So, in other words. It's not that God would lead you in temptation, but you're asking him, praying for him not to allow it to happen, that you would allow yourself essentially to go into te into temptation. And for me, uh, I see that as a, a prophetic picture um, of the time of Jacob's trouble, the, the time of temptation. The same word temptation is also uh, translated as or could be used as tribulation. So I, I see that as a 
is an element, not may, maybe not may not the primary meaning, but definitely an, an element to that interpretation. Um, it, it, it's basically saying to to Israel, uh, you know, to pray not that they that they would not enter into the time of Jacob's trouble, which they can escape if they only believe in him. Um, which I, again, that's my view of the rapture. So that's that's my answer. All right, thank you. We have some very good insights there, brother. I uh, first before I answer though, there's this comment by Eric Osas that says the last ten minutes of the panel just started again. Uh, I don't know if is anybody else experiencing any technical issue the way that Eric uh, expressed it. Uh, if so, let us know. And Ben, maybe you could try to figure out what that's all about. But uh, let me respond now to everybody's answers. Uh, uh, I don't see a running t total for the, uh, the the votes here, uh, so I don't know how we stand. But uh, I'm going to answer it certainly false. Uh, but I don't want to give anybody the impression I'm against others saying the Lord's Prayer. Um, uh, I, I would say that... Uh, to um, uh, tell people that they must pray this way, the way Roman Catholics teach, that you memorize, um, well, at least three prayers, the, um, the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and Hail Mary. Those prayers must be memorized and repeated in, according to what the priest orders you to do for your penance. Um, so, and of course, I disagree with that. That's, uh, we should not be saying memorized prayers. That's what this chapter is uh, about, uh, much, much of it uh, leading up to this prayer that Jesus uh, tells us. Uh, it, he's talking about how to pray uh, and how, what not to do. Uh, he tells us don't do vain repetitions. And yet people memorize this Lord's Prayer, which by the way, the Lord's Prayer yeah, the term Lord's Prayer is not in the Bible, uh, unless you read uh, some of the modern translations, the uh, what they call the, the, the um, titles and subtitles of chapters. I'm looking at the NABRE right now, and when it gets to verse 5, it says teaching about prayer, and then at the beginning of verse 9, it says the Lord's Prayer. These are the subtitles for that this chapter. So the term the Lord's Prayer is commonly used, but I remember Dr. Ruckman saying it's a misnomer. It's not the Lord's Prayer because it's not a prayer that Jesus would pray, but it's a prayer that uh, for the disciples to pray. Uh, so it would be better to be called uh, a disciple's prayer rather than the Lord's Prayer. Uh, but I think what Lisa said, and there's a key word here, and when, you, and when we get to verse 9, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. Uh, and I think some of them in the chat room also made the point quite well that it's a it's a it's a like a prototype or an outline or a, a format to follow but it's not intended to be memorized and repeated mindlessly the way that the heathens do and the roman catholics do but uh just as much i would say that um, it would be wrong to impose this on on people saying you must pray like this i would say that it's equally or almost as wrong to, to also say to anybody, you cannot say the Lord's Prayer. Uh, if you're free to pray that way, you're free to pray, you know, some other way. Uh, but um, we are cautioned about memorizing prayers and repeating them without thinking, because prayer is supposed to be a real conversation with God. I mean, imagine if uh, you're, you're married and uh, year after year goes by and the, everything, the only thing you ever said to your spouse was a paragraph that you memorized. And that's it. That's all you just repeat that one paragraph back to them every time. It doesn't take them very long. You say, what, well, have you lost your mind? I mean, I'm trying to talk to you. Let's have a conversation. And all you do is repeat these same four sentences to me over and over again. That's not a conversation. So um, there's a lot of things wrong with it, but it does give us a like a model of con the type of prayer that we, we can uh, employ. But in this case, it's... Uh, some people also who are dispensationalists, like Dr. Ruckman, they would say that this is prayer is really uh, for the uh, uh, the uh, tribulation period uh, uh, to bring in the during the tribulation come Lord and bring in the millennial kingdom. So Thy kingdom come is a is a prayer for the tribulation saints 
if that's if that's your viewpoint if you're a dispensational futurist then it would apply in that way um, but there's a lot of things leading up to the prayer that i think are important uh, uh we're telling us to uh don't pray to get attention for ourselves do it privately uh, uh don't memorize prayers that are just mindless repetitions and don't mean anything because you're not even thinking when you pray um so there, there's uh, this chapter has a lot of very important points, including the prayer itself. But go, go ahead, Angel. Oh, I wanted to ask just uh, your opinion um, about this because uh, I've heard people say different things. And, uh, you know, when it talks about not praying publicly, does that mean that we shouldn't pray? Like what you said, that means we shouldn't we shouldn't uh, pray in a group or like pray on broadcast. Like because uh, I, I somehow that feels like wrong to not like it feels like like to say that you shouldn't ever pray like out loud on, on a broadcast like um considering like the spiritual warfare aspect of it for you know especially if you're you know uh trying to you know uh, bless somebody or even you know honestly for me hearing people pray it helps me uh because i talk to god that's what i do like when i talk i i just prayer for me is conversation with god but when it comes to like spiritual warfare uh, and, you know, people that are prayer warriors, I, I, I feel like sometimes uh, kind of at a loss in terms of how to go about that besides just being like, hey, God, can you vanquish this evil? Like, I don't know, I feel like I talk to him like normal. But uh, when I was, you know, thinking about how people, do, you know, when they uh, when they're praying uh, for the purpose of spiritual warfare, it seems like sometimes I wonder if that's different. And so hearing people pray actually. Uh, you know, people that I know are, are real believers, you know, is, you know, benefits me a little bit just to um, understand sort of how they approach that. But I know that uh, you prefer not to pray publicly, but, um, you know, on the broadcast. But I mean, do you think that um, that that's what, uh, what, what you know, the, uh, that Matthew was saying and, you know, uh, that you we were being told by Jesus in that, uh, in that chapter that we shouldn't um, pr pray publicly at all like that it, you know because some people uh, advise like the silent prayer and uh and say that you know it's uh, uh it's, it's unrighteous mm -hmm. to, to pray out loud whatsoever so i'm just curious what you think about <laughs> are, that are you directing that to me yes yeah i was no no, no not okay. you no no i was thinking i was actually thinking of uh, jesse lee peterson he always scolds people about praying out loud and talks about the silent prayer which i think is it, I mean, I think it's kind of weird too because I guess you don't even talk when you like it's just in your head. So I think that's that's kind of an you know, extreme too. So. Is, is, is he in the congregation, Jesse? No, 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 Jesse. Lee, no, he's like a he's a pundit that's been on uh, TV for at least oh, like yeah. like all my life. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. He's a he's like a black, I guess, pastor. I guess he's kind of out there though when it comes to a lot of. His teaching, so I'm just, I, I, but he's the one I've heard going on about that the most. So I was just curious. Well, I think your your question is a very good question, and um, if you're directing it to me, I understand why, because uh, yeah, in general, the way, the way that uh, we we do our prayer on Sundays in the Sunday program, yes. um, um, I would say the same rule that I said about the Lord's prayer uh, would apply more broadly, and that is that. I wouldn't tell someone they must pray the Lord's Prayer, and I certainly would never tell them they can't pray the Lord's Prayer. Right. So um, it's the same thing with praying out loud publicly in a group. I would never tell someone that they must do it uh, or that they can't do it. So, but I'm, I'm just telling you how I am going to apply it to myself. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm personally very self-conscious about um me too. Uh, this uh, this particular portion of scripture, I've always been very sensitive to it. And now I believe it probably in the Lord's mind, it, it, it's a matter of your 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 intention and your motive. Yes. Uh, if your motive of praying out loud in front of people is to get attention and glory for yourself, mm -hmm. that's what Jesus is frowning upon and denouncing. Yes. Uh, but if your heart is pure and you don't have any ulterior motive or selfish motive, uh, then you certainly should be free to, to do it. He, he's really not saying pray privately for any other reason except to those people who are doing it to get glory for themselves. Yeah. My problem is that whenever I do any public prayer, personally, when I'm doing the prayer, my there's something in the back of my mind taunting me the whole time thinking about uh, am I performing? Me too. 
am I, uh, I am I am I putting on some kind of a performance because now I I feel like I have to say this beautiful uh, articulate artful prayer that's going to be so powerful and moving and and, and or, uh, it's not the way I normally pray my my yeah, prayer, me either. My own private prayer is the simplest prayer, like a little child, just, Lord, help me. Lord, thank you. Help me. Thank you. I say, yep. that, that's it. And, you know, of course, I'll tell them what I need and, and what the problem is. But it's very uh, casual. It's not formal. Me and it's, it's not beautiful and eloquent. Uh, now, if I'm trying to pray publicly and I'm feeling like i got to be eloquent, I feel like I'm being phony. So yep. that, that's my, that's my I, I, you could even call it a hang up. OK, uh, if, if these thoughts don't go through your head, if you're if you're free from any of these uh, feelings, and thoughts that are preventing it, there, there's no reason why and you cannot pray publicly as long as you're not doing what Jesus said, just trying to get glory for yourself. Uh, anybody want to respond to that? I will. But I want to give other people a chance first. Oh, I just say I, I totally relate with you, uh, Luke. Uh, my prayers are very simple. Um, and I just basically say, get it done, dad, you know, um, not, not like that, but I basically, you know, I, I know he's always going to do the right thing, you know, whether the prayer's answered or not, I know always know he's going to do the right thing. I just kind of, uh, offer up my thoughts to him. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, I, I do pray for people when, especially if they're in trouble and things like that. Um, but yeah, I don't like to pray publicly. Um, and I'm, there's nothing wrong with it. I, I don't like to do it for the same reasons you cited. Yeah, I I, uh, I just just talk to God, so it's very conversational. And then, um, but I do think that there's a benefit, especially if you're ministering to an audience. I do think I don't think it's it's uh, phony or or you know disingenuous or attention seeking to formulate um, a beautiful prayer because uh, I think that you're trying to reach others and the hearts of other people. And you know, a lot of times you might even be uh, you know, there might be a lot of unbelievers in your audience and, um, you're trying, and it's also for, I do, you know, I think when it comes to spiritual warfare, I think that, uh, it's sort of like a, a song, like a little mini song or something that people, people put together when they, when they, when, because Lisa has such beautiful prayers and a lot of them just come right off the dome. I don't know how she does it. Um, uh, and I, I, I don't even, I don't even try. I'm not even going to try to pray like that on the same show because <laughs> it's so, it's so natural. <laughs> But it's like it, it's. It, I think it's like a, to me it, it, when you know when you do at least it, to me it's like a it's like a song. It's only I can put that it. Was funny. Um, and I think it has you the same purpose. Right <laughs> off the dome, and I don't think yeah. you were talking about the firmament either. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, uh, I think that's the right thing. I, songs are songs, right? But but a, a, a prayer to God when you when you construct it to be uh, beautiful or a little poetic. Um, doesn't always have to be for attention. It can also be to, to bring praises and glory to God when other as other people are hearing it because it's that, that stands out to people a lot, a lot more than hey God, hey Dad, all right, you know that thing? Yeah, yeah. Can you fix that thing for me or whatever? You know, that's not how I talk to God, but like the it is casual like that, and that really won't maybe like strike a lot of people when they're hearing this. So I, I, that's why I think uh, I don't know if anybody else ever thought of that. But what do you say, Lisa? Uh, You're the expert on this. Uh, the, no, don't don't pin me with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, because I was involved in church for so long, my yeah. mother was actually, I, I've never shared that with you guys, but she was actually the minister of, uh, what did they call it back then? Let me see. It wasn't praise and worship. She would actually stand up uh, at the beginning of the assembly and pray. And she, oh. my mother, my mother's prayers were, you think my prayers are a little bit long. My mother's prayers sometimes be, you know, 10 minutes. It would just be as the spirit leads. And she would just start, she'd almost get a little preach going in her prayer. And, yes. I, and what, uh, what we, I think what I learned from that is how prayers, even the prayer itself, if prayed in faith and according to the scripture and saying scripture, when you say the prayers, um, putting other believers in remembrance of God's word as you're praying yes. actually ministers to people. So right. that's what, when I do that, that's what my intent is, is to minister the word in prayer as I'm speaking and put people in remembrance of his word to be in agreement with his word, because um, that's what has the power. 
is faith in his name. It's faith in his word. It's faith in his promises, not in me, you know, because people get moved by personalities and that is not the right place to be. Uh, I like people. There are people I like, but if they veer from the word of the living God, it's just like I, I'll say it. I've said it about myself. If I go left and Jesus goes right, you follow Jesus. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's the thing. So I appreciate that, sister. So if I got that, I gleaned that from my mom because she was a minister of prayer in uh, in our church there. She would stand up and lead the congregation. And I did learn some of those things from her, watching her and observing her, how she would pray the scripture. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's why up. it reminds you of a psalmist, because that's yes. what a psalmist does. Uh, it Actually, there is there is a term in music, and I want to talk to Brother Fritz about this tomorrow night, uh, how you minister with, the Bible says, psalms, hymns, and spiritual uh, psalms, sing with grace and melody in your heart to the Lord. Um, that is also, that is what we incorporate in, in prayer. Or at least I know I do, and I know my mom does. So that's where that, that comes from. It's beautiful. Yeah, and it does. It encourages people. It encourage that. I think that that's when a, a public prayer that that's even you know even if you, you think of it ahead of time, it's it's not done for attention. It's done for the benefit of those listening. You know, uh, to 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 actually lift them up and and, yes. and uh, reconnect yes, them exactly. Amen. Exactly. It's to stir their spirit toward the Lord. Yes. And and his their your thoughts toward him and your praise toward him and your worship toward him because it's all about Jesus. I'm looking at the re results of the voting. Uh, certainly true six, leaning true two. So the, on the true side you have eight, uh, and on the false side you got certainly false three and <laughs> false four. So it's seven. Seven to eight is pretty much evenly split in terms of how we view and or not view it, but use it, the Lord's Prayer. And as I said, I think it's important that uh, we're free to do it or not. And uh, but regarding uh, uh, Lisa's prayers, uh, I, I always love when you do the prayers, Lisa. It's it is beautiful. You are uh, uh, gifted at that. I think that uh, the Lord is using you for your prayers, and uh, I appreciate it very much. Uh, I would never question the motive, but that, that's to me what it really boils down to: is a person doing prayer, public prayer, to get glory for themselves. If not, then it's certainly okay. That's why I think that's the point that Jesus was making. Oh, I don't disagree, and and that's why I, I pointed out verse verse nine. Uh, I would agree. Jesus may have never, <laughs> he probably, other than showing them that prayer, never said it again <laughs> because it was uh, the manner. He was saying, this is like a, a blueprint or an example. That's why he was very careful to say, don't do vain repetitions, as Ben pointed out just before that, because that's not what we're supposed to do. That's a dead prayer. That's what all the false religions of the world do, vain repetitions. We serve a living God. He, he's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. So our prayer should be dynamic because he's dynamic. So, and when I say dynamic, I just mean alive, you know, that there's life in them. There's not, you know, vain repetitions, just as the Lord said. And I don't disagree with anything anybody on the panel said. I, I think everybody had something to add to this. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, those in the chat, as I heard a lot of people answered yes, sorry, just last thing. I, I'm curious if you guys want to put in the chat comments, like for those of you guys who said that you do repeat it frequently, can, uh, do you guys ever feel like, I don't know, like saying it sort of centers you or makes you kind of feel like it kind of like washes you clean a little bit, um, like your mind kind of like, because that sometimes when I have found myself saying it, sometimes it's, it's because... Maybe I'm not focused on the Lord in that moment. I'm 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 in, an, I'm in a bad mood. I'm not in the spirit, and I can't really think of a of um, you know uh, a, a, even a, a besides telling God to, to put me in a better mood or to help me to, to lift me out of that mood. Um, that prayer sometimes um, helps me uh, sort of be focused again on praise and God, sort of like the spirit of praise. So uh, I'm just curious if uh, people want to uh, answer, if they did in the comments too, uh, on the on the poll site, uh, why they why they repeat it, like what if they get something out of it when they do? Because I don't think most of us here are going to be doing it for like a, a superstitious reason, like I think a lot of Catholics do. Um, I I think uh, uh, it's just uh, 
for me, it, it does. It makes me, it makes me feel, feel good. And I'm sure it's because of my experience with it too. My, my experience. Well, you know, uh, go on, Lisa. Oh, I'm sorry. What you said about the Catholic I at one period of time, even though I was a believer <laughs> at the time, and my parents sent me to parochial school, and mm -hmm. that's a part, if you went to confessional, you got told based on, you know, you went in, <laughs> I'm sorry, you went into the confessional and you said, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been an umpteen, you couldn't even remember, weeks since my last confession. If being in school, it was probably the week before because they brought you in for these rituals. And then, and then he, you would tell him what you could basically remember, which wasn't past yesterday of anything you did, did wrong, unless you did, did something big wrong the week before. And then he would mm -hmm. say, say, you know, five our, our, our fathers Hail and Mary. 10 Hail Marys, right? And uh, you come out. I never forget, I told a family member who didn't know anything about Catholicism. You would come out, you would cross paths where there was. If you crossed the middle of the aisle to go back to your seat, you had to genuflect. And she was like, what the <laughs> heck is genuflect? And I'm like, it's this whole thing where they, where, where they do the... Step on a crack, break your mother's back. <laughs> no, they do the sign of the cross, which is actually inverted. Yes. And then bow their oh, knee. Yeah. yeah, it's inverted. And then bow their knee and then cross over and sit down and actually blaspheme God because he said, don't pray vain repetition. So, you know, this this is just glaring examples uh, of how Roman Catholicism, <laughs> it literally does things in direct opposition to the instruction of the Always. Lord Jesus Christ. Always call no man father. They call him father. Don't cover your head when you're praying. They wear the right. Light. They wear all kinds of hats. Everything yes. on every swamp. It's just Satan just sticking his tongue out, uh, and all this this mindless uh, uh, ritual that they do. I know the the, the people that get trapped. There, you know, I'm not saying that all Catholics are lost. Probably a lot of saved Catholics, but it's a it appeals to the lost person i can tell you that for sure because even as a god-hating atheist man that genuflecting i was uh <laughs> i wanted to do it i i thought it, it, it's something soothing when you don't have faith it works in place exactly. of your faith. exactly rituals yes. soothe the flesh there is something yes. that is it's actually supernatural I think the entities yes. feed on that that energy that people use for those rituals, which is why it's seductive to both the person and those spirits. There's something deep about rituals. Absolutely, it's it's um it because you know people they get obsessive compulsive disorder because uh, I I had a slight a bit of it when I was younger. Uh, you know, not nothing too crazy, but definitely. Definitely to where I would get anxiety if I didn't uh, go back and uh, pet my cat another couple times when I thought I didn't pet him, you know, enough. To, it's crazy things like that, but it only manifested when I was anxious already, when I was there's something upsetting me already. These little compulsive, uh, repetitious things would, would, would bother me. And, um, and I really think that when we see these ritualistic uh, behaviors that they do in all of these ungodly, you know, unbelieving uh, false religions, uh, it, it is supposed to, you know, it probably does have a spiritual element, but it also pacifies the flesh because that is that person's spirit or soul, uh, you know, that, that, you know, they don't actually have any faith. They don't actually feel safe. They don't feel protected. They don't feel like they know for sure uh, what's true at all. And these little rituals make them feel like they did something. It makes them, the way that we feel, just thinking about the promise of Christ and what he's done for us already, and that it's a done deal, it's like a very uh, pathetic version of that when they genuflect. It's like they don't, when you see that that's an empty void, when I see people doing that empty void where faith should be, and they put their trust in that stupid ritual. And in, and in the Catholics, it's just overboard. It's like, it's it's insane. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably worse than Islam in a lot of ways with all of the little knickknacks and paddy wax they've got. Like, I can't even, some of the stuff I found out, like the scapulas, like mm -hmm. the, the whole scapula thing, I, I couldn't, well, I can't believe it. I can't believe people go for that. Um, and that is the form of Christianity that they present us in all of the media and all the movies growing up. That's it. That's the, that's, you know, nine times out of ten, that's what you'll see if there's a, a horror movie and they bring in some type of Christian element. It's a, it's a Catholic ritual. And, um, and yeah, but, but I, I, I totally see the, the danger of these vain repetitions. I think that there's a, a big difference between 
that and when people say the Lord's Prayer, kind of the way that we might recite a, a hymn as believers. You know, to me, that's kind of the mm -hmm. same purpose that it serves. So, yes. Hmm. Even though the that's history it. of Islam, huh? a lot of people don't uh, know the history of Islam is tied exactly. and linked to the Catholic Church. Yep. They created it. It's basically. derived from it. Yes. It, it was created, which is one of the reasons they have prayer beads and, and do prayer rituals and a number of other things. And, and all people have to do is research the history and you'll see it's true. We're not, we're not making it up. All right. Let me uh, go ahead and read the comments from chat if you don't mind. Is it okay? Yeah, yes. Very good. Very good. Go ahead. Okay. First person says, I didn't used to, but I found that when I don't know, I don't know what to pray. It's the one I use, even if I, even if I switch it up some. That's from Heather. Mm. Uh, another person says, "Why not?" Question mark. We should all learn in the same way we learned the Pledge of Allegiance. I think, I'm thinking that's a joke. Uh, yeah, that must be a joke. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance does kind of sound like it. I was thinking, like the, they they must have patterned it after the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, well, well, the flesh does like to work. Um, the flesh. That's how the flesh. You know. The flesh, I think it's why the, the, all these rituals, uh, because pe again, the, we, it, the tendency of flesh is to, is to work, not rest. Um, so the second, third response is, especially when praying for self and others, I recite, lead us away from temptation and deliver us from evil. Another person says, rarely, but I just have, rarely, but I have just recently. We are supposed Interesting. to. Interesting. We are supposed to routinely pray in the manner of the Lord's Prayer, not only to pray the Lord's Prayer, ma prayer Matthew 6, 9, after this manner, pray ye. It's an example of how to. Uh, I think I'll be looking for this person in chat. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the next person says, it saved me in the flesh and spirit routinely. It helped me and my relationship with my Heavenly Father and the will he has for me in this life. Another person says, I often pray the Lord's Prayer as a way to call myself before sleeping. Yes. Chris says to walk in the spirit and live by the sword of God's word. This, the prayer includes the kingdom today, forgiveness, asking for help to avoid evil. Nothing wrong with saying it. That's a good answer. Um, finally, the last person says leaning false due to scripture, which talks about repetition prayers. That's from Heidi Green. Mm -hmm. that, that before you go to bed thing to calm yourself that is right on target bingo that that, mm -hmm. that is that is, that's probably i forgot but that is something i've done a lot of times because i just still get scared of the dark <laughs> sometimes oh, okay. when i'm not tired enough to go straight to sleep i get nervous about i because i've had you know sleep paralysis and stuff so yeah mm -hmm. that's a good that's a really good point mm -hmm. well i just want to point out one other thing uh about the the uh clothing that the nuns wear uh, in in Roman Catholicism, they're actually called habits. <laughs> so oh, wow. I I don't think that's an accident, <laughs> and very much looks like burkas. Just saying. Yeah, and you know they can fly too. I hear so it's got to be of the <laughs> devil. You know. <laughs> you, you're that terrible. That's not natural. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in case you didn't notice, uh, Sister Renee's in the chat room now, and, and she made a couple of very good comments. One, she said that uh, public prayer is okay as long as you are not doing it to be seen as religious in the eyes of others, right. but are genuine in your prayer. Uh, that's for, Amen to that. And I see that uh, Brother Steve, uh, he, he said, um, where was it? Uh, there's a big difference between repetition and vain repetition. Right. I, I, I find that to be very true. I've off, I've struggled with my, in my private prayers too, isn't this? Maybe I think too much and I'm too self-conscious, but uh, tell me if this has happened to any of you. Uh, as I, as I'm praying and the prayer needs, the, the prayers, uh, some things are changed from day to day. But there are some prayer needs that I'm persisting in for a long time. I was always praying for certain people and certain things, to, uh, certain help. And uh, uh, I find, well, I'm repeating it. And I'm thinking, is this, is this a, becoming a vain repetition? Because I'm praying over and over again. Pretty much it turns out to be almost word for word as, as my prayer is developing. And then the, the next day I'm saying the same thing. But... 
often uh, you can also argue on the other side that uh, you're going to the Lord like the the, the, woman, the woman went to the judge yeah. over and over again and persisted and the judge exactly. didn't even like her but he finally gave in just because she was persisted so maybe repeating it over and over again is uh, what the, the Lord wants to show that we, our, our desire is great well, I think uh, vain repetition also kind of encompasses the idea of your showing your endurance uh, in prayer. Like, you know, it, you know not, not I'm taking vain repetition in, in the negative sense where like you see those Jews at the at the what they call the Western Wall rocking back and forth incessantly uh, reciting the same prayer over and over again. It's almost like, oh, well, I, I gave up my breakfast, lunch and dinner to be here all day. Uh, I'm such a, a, a worthy rabbi or whatever. Uh, I think that's the kind of thing that jesus was referring to yeah sister heather i'm glad i'm not the only one thank you for telling me she's wrote uh yes brother luke uh my prayer for meals is repetitious and it bothers me uh, so at least there's two of us that are kind of self-conscious about this that you know you pray you say grace or you say whatever whenever you do your prayer that you're saying the same thing repeatedly is it vain repetition uh, or is it you're just I know what you mean. You ask for the same thing because you, you're being persistent? Well, if That's you look carefully on that, the scripture doesn't really talk about grace, saying grace as much as it does saying giving thanks. So, I mean, how many times have you sat down and the meal was so good and you, <laughs> you tore into it, ate it, gobbled it up, was wiping the gravy off your face and you said, oops, I forgot to say grace. But the Bible says, to give thanks. Yes. And you can give thanks before or after a meal. That, that's a good point because I I've uh I've not actually started a practice of grace because I don't know, even though I kind of thought I was supposed to, I just felt wrong about it just enough not to do it. But I always naturally find myself thanking God for the meal, especially if like everybody's enjoyed it and like my kids actually ate it all, like all four of them actually, or all three of them actually eat it instead of, I usually have to make like two or three different meals at night just to, to get everybody to eat. Um, uh, and I, you know, I, I find myself doing that naturally, but uh, I do think sometimes um, it, there's something that feels a little phony about like, I remember, you know, not, nobody was able to eat or sit down like, oh no, we have to say great, it's grace first. And that, that just felt you know, very Catholic to me, honestly, uh, because that's uh, that's that's just uh, almost an annoying ritual. That's going to annoy a lot of people. It's not actually going to come from a, a good place of actually, you know, actually being grateful to God for the food. So the good thing you point that out, though, about how you can thank <laughs> God after the meal. Yeah, well, I had just come back from my family get together Saturday, and that was one thing my brother had pointed out when we were talking. He said, yeah, and he used that as an example when you when you've already gobbled down the, the meal, you go, oh, crap, I didn't say grace. <laughs> I said, first of all, we walk in grace. So then if you yeah. understand that, then we're in liberty. We're in liberty. So then what do you do? Thank you, Lord. That was a wonderful meal. That was awesome. Doesn't that just yeah. fire you up to know that, that you're not in bondage, that right. you can just say thank you? He's a living God. What would you do if you went to your mama's house and you gobbled up the meal and she looked at you at the end of the meal and went, <clears throat> We, you'll be oh oh sorry mom thank you that was awesome mom thank you <laughs> yeah it's listen anyway you know like when my when joel tells me uh there's a difference between when um like i'll ask him all he's after he's you know halfway to this meal i'll say is it okay is it good like usually when i first give it to him honestly just to see if i need to fix something uh you know like if he wants something or, or you know uh, change or like wants more or less right. something whatever and um when he says, yeah, it's good, it's good. That doesn't do near what it does when he, when after he's done eating and he gives me, but that was really good, especially because he's, like, he's a man of so few words. But like right. there's a difference between, you know, me asking him uh, and then he kind of like automatically <laughs> saying that, uh, you know, and then uh, when he, he actually he does it on his own. And if he did it every single night, it wouldn't matter either. You know, right. so that every time, so, you know? exactly. <laughs> I think we all understand what being appreciated feels like. You know, it's a joy to give to somebody that you love, but at the same time, when they're thankful and appreciative, that just makes it even more wonderful, uh, the whole experience. And since we serve a living God, we should remember that, y'all. That There's a whole lot of religiosity. Even being believers 20 and 30 and 40 years, you realize that you got to dump 
because it doesn't have anything to do with Christ. It's just a, you know, a religious mindset. And when we really look at the scriptures, it's not even in there. And we put ourselves into this mental bondage that the Lord never intended us to have. Right. And I, and what we're, what we're just talking about, about this, um, the, the difference between being appreciated and somebody feeling obligated to, uh, to say something. This is the spirit of grace versus works, really, because um, when we are freed by, by God's grace and by um, Christ's finished work and us actually accepting it as sufficient, we're free to actually serve God and do whatever we do, whatever good that we do. After that, whatever um, you know, improvements we do or don't make, uh, that's like the first, you know, pretty much well, one of the big times, but really, the, and the most important times, that we can actually do something in, in a way altruistically, because we know we're not doing it just in front of us. And that's why, uh, unless the eternal security is, is, is correct, um, you know, it's, it's the, the idea, the relationship we have with God is very cheap, because anything that you do, it's really just serving you. Like, it's self-serving, uh, because you think you have to do it to try to avoid you know, uh, hell fire. So it, it, uh, it, when people say that, uh, that the, you know, eternal security, once they've always saved that, you know, that, you know, it's cheap or whatever they say, no, because then, you know, if you still serve God, <laughs> um, after, you know, you don't have to anymore. I mean, yeah, there are rewards, but let's be honest. It's the same thing with extra credit. Most kids, you know, they'll sweat getting an F, right? But uh, most kids don't go out and do the extra credit. Right. So so they'll they want to not fail, but, you know, they want to at least pass or even maybe get an A or a B. But they're not trying you know, only certain kids do the extra credit. And a lot of times those kids do it because they're trying not to fail. Right. So you do the extra credit at the end of the year because you've got to try to make up and get your get your, uh, you know, grade to where you can actually speak by with a D. Right. So so the rewards don't actually change the fact that um, when we actually serve God, uh, knowing that we don't have to return for salvation. Um, it's a very uh, different thing. It's it's not a selfish thing the way it would be if we thought we were doing it just uh, to cover our butts and save our own butts. So uh, and that's why I don't think rewards interfere with that because it is it's it's a very different thing than um, we don't even know exactly what they are, right? We don't know what they are exactly uh, uh, how much you get. So that's just sort of a promise. Mr. Angel, your uh, Angel, Angel, your audio is cracking up right now. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Sorry. you were sounding Sorry. like R two D two. Yeah, me. it wasn't bad. I'm gonna hang up and come back in. You're good now, back. sister. Yeah. I think it was just your position. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think she's gone already. Well, we got a compliment from somebody out in the chat that I thought was nice. What is it? He said, "He said you guys are all super cool. I'm really glad to be here to hang out with you." <laughs> that is nice. Praise God! That's Isn't nice. that nice? It's better He's than being called cool. heretics. That was Quentin <laughs> Randolph. Quentin Randolph. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you, Quentin. Appreciate that very much. It's uh, that's what it should be. Uh, that, that's what we are hoping for and praying for uh, that the, we have a congregation that. Is as just as you described it. Um, I, th yeah, this subject, uh, I'm thinking of all kinds of follow up questions to it that I'd like mm. to ask. But, uh, there's uh, there's so many more things we need to, I guess, go to. But for example, uh, uh, you're talking about praying after the meal. I uh, quite often, you know, I, I usually eat my meals by myself anyway. My wife, we don't eat the same time. I, oh. I use most of my own meals and. Uh, and, uh, and and we eat, we eat in se Same separate, here. separate rooms, you know, or, and, and uh, so, uh, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when we go out to eat, of course, uh, we always enjoy going out to eat and, eat and talking and visiting, but we, we see each other. We're, we're both retired. We're in the same house 24 seven. So it's not like we don't get to see each other and talk, but when we eat normally it's I'm by myself. So, um, but I, I always catch myself, I start eating, and I think, oh, I didn't even thank the Lord. So I usually start <laughs> thanking the Lord as I'm eating, because I, I, as soon as I start eating, I realize how much I'm enjoying this. And I think, Lord, thank you for this yeah. food. I forgot to thank you earlier. It's so wonderful. I'm so blessed, Lord. Thank you. Yes. 
Uh, but do you, uh, let's say that you're in, in, in public, or let's say not public, but let's say semi-public, or you're with fam friends or family or something at some uh, function or something, and people getting ready to eat, and uh, uh, people start eating. Uh, would you would you make any kind of public uh, 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 statement saying, "Hey, uh, can we can we say grace or something like that," or were you just do it on do it yourself pray to yourself or or will will you pray to yourself but make it uh you know um overt where people can see you're bowing your head you're uh, people look at you they obviously can see that you're praying and that they're so that you know that they're aware of it i mean do any of these things ever uh you think about or how do you deal with these situations anybody brother cripps i haven't heard from you for a while are you taking care of jen no, oh, no, no. I just, just uh, with this subject kind of dragged out a lot, lot longer than I thought it would. But uh, um, as far as in public, uh, no, I, I don't make it a uh, I, prayer to me is private. I mean, I, I don't mind praying in front of people, but it's not generally what my focus is on. So if I'm out somewhere, I, I pray to myself. If it's a couple of people, uh, you know, I might ask, is, you know, do, do, does everyone here want to say a, a, a open grace? And if they are an open blessing and if they agree to that, then I would do it. Uh, that's all I have. Mm -hmm. All right, then. All right. Well, I've actually had people, this is in a similar re relation, but unrelated to so-called praying uh, to bless your food. I was in public somewhere. And uh, I actually was going to rent a car and I was sitting outside because it was a nice day waiting for them to call me for my rental to be available. And this gentleman that worked there walked past me and he got to talking. I don't know why other than the spirit of the Lord drew him and uh, he got to talking about his daughter and his daughter was ill. And he, he and we got to talking and I said, well, would you like me to pray for you? <laughs> And he was like, yes, please pray, pray for me and my daughter. And so I did. And I wasn't loud. I didn't try to want everybody to hear me. But if somebody was walking past, they could clearly hear I was praying. He needed to know what I was praying for so he could decide whether or not to be in agreement with it. How are you going to agree with something if you can't hear it? So, <laughs> so I prayed for him and his daughter. I have not been back there in months, so I don't know what the outcome was. If I do bump into him again and he tells me, I'll be sure to let you guys know. But that's not something I'm worried about. Because to me, whether or not other people see me, if I decide to pray over my food, I'm not loud. I'm going to say it in a whispering tone. If I'm by myself or with someone else, it doesn't matter to me. I've been with atheists and said, excuse me, I'm you know, going to bless my food. I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it because I want to bless my food. And... <laughs> And uh, one of the reasons I do and ask the Lord to bless it is because you go places and like Paul was saying, you eating stuff sacrificed to idols and you don't know what them people did, you know, over that food. And that's that's the main reason we are actually supposed to pray over our food is for protection because we don't know what's in it. Lord, good knows. God knows today we don't know what's in it. So. But, you know, I don't worry about that because as far as I'm concerned, that's a witness to the laws that I serve a living God. So, I, I, you know, I don't worry about who's offended. They sure don't worry about offending me when they take the Lord's name in vain or say all kind of craziness and filthiness out of their mouth. They're not worried about offending us. And I just don't understand why Christians are so concerned about offending the world. You know, we don't go out to magnify the offenses, but... I am not going to shrink from being a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ because it makes somebody else uncomfortable. Just saying. Hey, can I get an amen to that? Amen. <laughs> you know, I was in a church. Uh, I've, I've sampled a lot of churches in Las Vegas over the years. And I was going to this uh, Calvary Chapel church. I like the pastor's messages uh, quite a bit. And... Uh, at the end of one of the services, um, you know, he shakes hands with people as everybody as we're leaving. And so I, I stopped to ask him a question. Uh, and um, I said, I've noticed that, you know, everybody's very quiet in here. Uh, I'm, uh, I, for me, 
when I when I hear a good message and I hear something that's uh, in profound and it moves me, I, I I feel like I want to shout. I, I want to say Amen. I want to raise my hand. Yeah. I want to clap. Or you know, mm-hmm. I, I, but and uh, but I feel like in here everybody's sitting on their hands and it to be inappropriate is the feeling I'm getting. And it mm. feels like it's like dead. And, and of course, when he said dead, he said, no, this church is not dead. But um, that's, uh, uh, I forgot what uh, the reason I even brought that up now. What were we talking about? Well, Maybe- I was saying about, I'm not worried about whether or not people are offended if I pray in public. Because, you know, we serve a living God. I'm not worried about whether or not the world is offended. And then yeah. that's when you started talking about Calvary Chapel. Yeah, yeah. And how you want to say amen in church and stuff, and you felt uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But it was dead. Yeah, okay, I remember. What I, I was asking everybody to say amen to your, your point. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, you know what? They, a lot of people amen. Hear. Come on. Sometimes get, get off your butt. Yeah, no, praise don't, God. Don't, don't enthusiasm. Get the, the spirit. <laughs> Come on, get hey, it. As far as you were, as far as you were saying that, I was looking at my monarch caterpillars. I, I only took two in this this year. I haven't seen any monarch butterflies hardly this year, and I so I took two in. I I, I do it every year usually, and um, I just realized that both of them are dying from this awful disease that turns them into black soup. So that's why I didn't say uh-huh. amen, because like right as you said that, I was looking and I realized, oh, oh it's really sad. Well, it's at really least sad. it's quiet tonight. Was it cold out there? So your crickets are not as loud tonight. No, I'm just inside. I'm inside. Um, but uh, oh, I love yeah, it. I, I love but I'm going to go record. outside here shortly. I do too. Uh, yeah. uh, all right. I think we may have exhausted the subject. At least I know Brother Grips is eager to move on, right? <laughs> he is. I think like I heard him snoring in the background. Yeah, oh. uh, yeah, about about to take a nap for sure. <laughs> okay, uh, we have like ten questions. I think we have ten questions, and it's it's almost eleven o'clock. We started at uh, just after nine thirty. Been on this one question. Well, little Crips, you don't, you're forgetting one thing. <laughs> you know uh, who submitted that question? You did. So it's I all did. right. You. Yeah, well, he just no more for like six months. Don't you know that when I <laughs> when I submit a question, the question is so profound. That it kind of dominates the rest of the conversation that night. Mm. Yes, you do have to admit that, don't you, Brother Cribs? Come on. <laughs> All right. I have yeah. noticed that uh, we have some study in general the last couple of weeks. The programs have been flying by, and I think it's mostly because we've been spending more time on the questions. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I'm, I'm yeah. All for it, but. All right. Well, hey, why don't we? Why don't we just pick a? Why doesn't Cribs look at the list of questions since we only have a, a what thirty minutes left there, technically? Why don't you yeah. uh, pick the next question we go to for Cribs? Oh, no. The one that you like the most. No, why not? I don't, have, I don't, yeah, have, I don't have a problem with it. Am I, yeah. I don't have, guys, I don't have the questions. My my phone is in general. Oh. She's listening to the. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. 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 All right. We'll okay. let you get away with it this time. <laughs> All right. We've, we've, we've beat up Brother Cripps long enough. Let's move on to uh, Ben. Question number two, please. Okay. N- number two. Hypnosis is a safe and reliable means of getting in touch with the subconscious and our true self. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. And that, was, is- that was tailored design. Uh, well, there we go. There's 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 an actual decent question. Who submitted that? That that's mine. Oh wow. Okay. Well, you have to go last then. Uh, Crips, why don't you go first since you enjoy this question so much? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I, I'm not saying it's safe or reliable, either one. So I would have to say uh, uh, leaning false. Um, I, I personally, uh, I don't throw all of psychology out the window, but this is a, a part of psychology that I don't uh, lend a lot of credence to. I actually had a friend that was studying to be a psychotherapist, and he tried to hypnotize me. And I hear people say this all the time, well, I can't be hypnotized. I, I just think it... I, I just think it's bunk. I mean, you, you, first of all, I was willing to be hypnotized and I did everything he told me to do, but I did not feel like I was, uh, out of it or, uh, following the suggestible or whatever. And and I, apparently there's a certain yeah, number. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. Um, but I, so demonic. I would say leaning, leaning false. I don't think it's, it's, uh, 
it's really useful at all. Uh, I don't think it's safe. I don't think it's like astral projection or anything. I mean, if you're trusting the person that's hypnotizing you, even if you are able to be hypnotized, I think it's important to trust the person that you're that, that's doing it if you're going to put yourself in that position. But I would say just avoid it altogether. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll say false, big time false, certainly false. It is an occultic practice. If you look into the guy Mesmer who came up with it, um, it it's like an occult science. Um, and um, I've never been able to be hypnotized, thankfully. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it's like for a saved believer, at least it may it may not even be possible. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. If you've been hypnotized and you're a safe believer, then then there could just be something that they understand about the way the brain works. But I do know that it was at least originally intended. Um, it was developed in, um, in an occultic context, and it, uh, it goes back a long, long time. And uh, it, uh, it, it, it it's demonic. And it, you know, from everything that I've learned about it, it's actually a, you know demonic. But I do think I know that for me, I get hypnotized, quote unquote. Uh, hypnotized by uh, driving. Now, for me, what that amounts to is I, I nod off, even if I'm not tired. It has nothing to do with that. It's road hypnotism, but it's really bad. It's actually like, it, it's really bad for me because um, it doesn't matter how tired I am or, or, you know, how much energy I have, how much coffee I drink. Uh, it, you know, I will, once I get into that trance-like state because of seeing the same stuff, I guess, repeat on the road over and over again, um, I can't snap out of it. Uh, I have to pull over. Um, it, and it runs in my family. My, you know, it's like something that my family, uh, my dad has, my aunt had. And it, uh, so I, I do think there's a physical mechanism to it. But the uh, actual practice of intentionally hypnotizing someone, um, as far from what I remember, it actually goes back even to ancient Egypt. And um, it has a lot to do with what, you know, what we know today is kind of uh, like mind control techniques. Um, and uh, it was done in a ritualistic way, uh, you know, from the from the very beginning. So I would say certainly false. It's not safe. And really, you're just opening yourself up to all sorts of suggestibility. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know of any you know any type of uh, you know Christian or biblical foundation for such a thing. Um, uh, you know, they, it's it's telling you to to depart from yourself. And sort of to turn to turn the wheel over to another person, um, and you know possibly a spirit, um, to get into some subconscious part of your mind that supposedly you can't access. But uh, uh, I, you know, to me, that is not of God at all. And I, I believe that people who are born again and, and dwell with the Holy Spirit, um, in particular, <laughs> you know, would not benefit from such a thing, and perhaps you know what, would uh, would not really be susceptible, at least not in the way that uh, some people are apparently able, you know, to be hypnotized and, you know, full on ba basically programmed. I mean, even in these parlor tricks you'll see where they make you bark like a dog and all that stuff. That's, uh, you know, a lot of that's for show. But, you know, when it's done legitimately, um, this is a very dangerous practice. It's dangerous to, uh, to turn that over to somebody if it is something that can be done to you. Um, you know, uh, it's it's not something I would ever trust, especially not with a with a like a, you know, as is usually the case, a godless uh, scientific materialist, um, you know, psychologist type. Uh, that's not uh, not something I, I think they're they're uh, trustworthy with. So I would say certainly false. I wish Angel, you would just share what you really think next time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah don't I, I, I'm pretty sure that Sister Lisa doesn't have whole whole bunch to say about this, right? Mm -hmm. I hope y'all taking notes. I'm about to rip this one up. Uh, <laughs> I was first. I was going to ask Brother Ben since this was his question. You're not going to tell us you have any yoga pants, are you? No, I do have parachute <laughs> pants though. Um, you have, yeah, I just you have what? Parachute pants, remember those? Parachute pants. Of course. Okay, no, this is just like yoga. It's not it's not Christian. It's not a Christian practice. It came out of the occult. The late John Todd spoke about this. He was somebody who was one of the descendants from the 13 original families of the Illuminati or Luciferian families, whatever you want to call them. And he said that in, I believe it was in the 70s, just prior to the 70s, the uh, the families looked around. They realized they were not going to get people in this nation and and let's just say the Western 
hemisphere to outright worship the devil. So what they decided to do was take certain practices, transcendental meditation, hypnotism, yoga, all of these different things, and break them up into uh, little bite-sized chunks and insert them into society. And that's what they did. And hypnotism was one of them. And it's my understanding that in some cases, that's what Sister Angel was saying, you, people are playing fire, especially if they're unsaved, that people have been possessed by allowing that. Because one of the things that you have to do is like empty your mind and you're relinquishing yourself over to the authority of another. It's, it's dangerous ground. And, 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 and the first time I ever saw hypnotism was not through psychologists or psychiatrists. It was on TV by magicians, which are AKA witches. So, you know, it's a dangerous practice. Believers should not be playing with it. It is satanic and people have been possessed from doing it if they're not saved. So, uh, you know, and, and even if you are saved, you can open a portal. This is why the Lord warns about touch, not touching the unclean thing and not putting any unclean thing before your eye. There's why this all these admonishments about these things in the scripture, because there are entities behind them. So, you know, that that would be my answer on that. It is wholly satanic. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Uh, well, Ben, you go last. So it's my guess it's my turn. I, uh, some of you probably have heard me say about my family uh, history, but uh, I come from a family of the occult, um, um, New Agers. My, my father, um, he even bought a house in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia, because he wanted to move there so he could be close to uh, Edward Casey's foundation, uh, uh, Association of Research and Enlightenment, because he thought Edgar Casey was uh, the greatest prophet. And um, my uh, sister, older sister, she became a clinical hypnotist. And she also trained and, and was uh, pro professionally uh, designed people's astrological charts. Um, they had seances. Um, my father claims that through hypnosis, he was able to go through past life regression and told me about previous lifetimes that he's, yeah. he had experienced through hypnosis. Yeah. So that's how my, my own ex, uh, experience in my family of observing all these things. Uh, but these things are all related and they are all part of uh, occult metaphysics and the new age religion, which is really the oldest religion. Uh, it, it's uh, 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 it's not, it's not so. If you eat from that tree, you won't die, but you will be like God. You'll have the knowledge of good and evil. And therefore, you can be independent from God, be your own God. That's really what it, the, the bottom line is. They want to be their own gods, and they think that they can can be. Uh, so, yeah, I would discourage anybody from uh, uh, doing it in, in any way. Um, um, there are claims that there are some benefits from it. They're like maybe they help someone quit smoking or lo lose weight or something. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I was told that there are some people can go into such a deep state of hypnosis that they can actually have uh, surgery done uh, without anesthesia. Uh, so it, it is uh, amazing some of the, the, the state that a person can achieve in hypnosis but I agree that I, I would not I would advise everybody to avoid it because I do believe it does open up uh, channels just like practice you know, a Ouija board and things like that. All right, uh, Ben. Well, uh, yeah, that, that question, I was interested in everyone's answer. I knew I wouldn't be disappointed. And so a lot of great answers. Um, I don't have a lot to say about it. Uh, I do think it's real. Um, it, that it's possible, but like Angel said, I think it's uh, it's more of a because I, I had the same problem where uh, if I drive too long, sometimes I could just kind of hypnotize myself and I will fall asleep. I had to pull over. Um, uh, thankfully, I don't have to really drive much too much anymore. But so I think there's something to it that uh, you're something predisposition that the brain has, uh, or at least some people do. Um, and I, I kind of like with drugs, you know, drugs too is that you take a lot of drugs. I think it opens up the uh, 
it, it weakens you mentally and it opens up uh, opportunity for evil to in spirits to mess with you. And I think that does happen. Um, and, and one reason I know it's, it's real, I would say, and I was surprised by this because back in the day when I was wasting my time and money in college, um, I would, I sat next to a girl. Uh, we, I knew her pretty well. I mean, we, we talked and, and I, you know, nothing unusual, unusual about her and everything absolutely trustworthy. And then one of the teachers, the psych, uh, the, it's a, I was taking psych, class of psychology and the teacher basically told everyone to stand up and hold the book in each hand. And, uh, he was basically telling people, okay, your book is getting very heavy, very heavy. He's basically looking for people that were, were open to suggestion. And she was one of them and he brought her up to the class. And he basically said, okay, you hypnotized her essentially and said, okay, now you're three years old uh, or five years old or whatever, write your name on the blackboard. And it was clearly child's hand, handwriting. Even her voice was uh, childlike. And then he said, okay, now you're, uh, you know, 15 or whatever, do it again. And you could see the progression um, in their maturity. And so it was, it was really, uh, interesting and bizarre, but yes, but things like, um, past lives and whatnot, I absolutely believe those are demonically, uh, quote unquote inspired because they've lived for millennia and they do know what has happened in the past and they can make all kinds of things that seem real or, or, you know, people could go to and say, Oh yes, that, uh, that actually did happen. Or only I could have known that, uh, my locket was, could be found in this chest at, you know, at such and such residence, uh, I must have had a, a past life, you know, so I, I could see the demons, you know, using it to legitimize their uh, false doctrines. Um, uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so you guys all gave great answers, and I just was kind of curious what you all thought about it. All right, then. Uh, let me read the comments, see if there's any comments. Yeah, read the comments, and let's see if Brother Cripps is satisfied and we should move on or not. Yeah, it was a much better, much better question, more detailed, actually led somewhere. <laughs> um, okay, I'll abstain, uh, I'll abstain from all uh, any further questions. Oh no, don't do that. Just the, the, Lord, the Lord's prayer. I mean, yeah, answer the question. The question is fine, but it went on for an hour and a half about the the one question. I just didn't think it was didn't think there was that much meat in there. You know? Yeah, okay, do you do you do say Lord's prayer or not? You, you, yes or no? That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Ben, go ahead. What are the comments? <laughs> okay, first comment is from Heather. It says, bad, bad, bad idea. You do not, you do, you do, you trust someone else with your mind? Uh, not me, just give me Jesus. Um, next person says, Leviticus 1931, do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out. And so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Uh, another person says, it's, it's satanic. A fourth person says, can't negate any type of mind manipulation for counterintelligence, psyops, use in national security, or homicide forensics. Uh, think about that one. Um, the next and the final one is, not sure on this one. From my experience, hypnosis has been mostly demonic. Yeah, I don't think anyone had anything good to say about it, really. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Well, Jason Robinson out in the chat said, we are born again, so we do have past lives. Oh, good. <laughs> well, at least a past life. Yeah, I would well, agree. The, the, the way that you know <laughs> that past lives aren't true is when you have people that do the past regression thing, and they say, I was Cleopatra in the, in the past life. They choose these historical figures. Then you hear someone else that was also Cleopatra or some uh, historical uh there, there, there can only be one. I mean, there can't be two separate people that did past life regression <laughs> that were told by someone, you were Cleopatra in a past life. And you're like, I was Cleopatra in a past life. Yeah. Well, well, now you're denying. The, the same demon, the demon, uh, you know, oh, uh, yeah. that might have actually had, you know, been involved with Cleopatra, you know, also having to bother with these two people. But usually one of them, you know, or a lot of these people are just lying, you know, but then there's people, little kids that have like really crazy memories. Uh, that uh, people think that that proves it. That proves it, and it's like, and people underestimate demons. They just really underestimate how how clever they are. <laughs> well, so, one of the tactics of this is to blow people's minds, like titillation, that they they have an experience that they're fascinated by, 
And then they go down searching into this occult to gain more and more knowledge and get more and more experiences. And it leads them away from the light of Christ where they completely dismiss Christ, completely reject Christ. That, you know, that's passe. That's nothing. And they're pursuing this darkness until they literally drop into darkness. That's what the devil does. This is this is a trap. It's a trick to pull them away, pull them away from the word, from the truth. So that they deny it. Oh, that's a waste of time. That's all. And they think they've got this knowledge and this understanding. And they'll do little, they'll do things that'll blow their mind till they literally die and drop into hell. That's the goal of these lying spirits. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it might surprise you that uh, they actually use the Bible to support some of their positions. Did you know that uh, when Jesus said a man must be born again? That, that uh, that's a proof of uh, reincarnation. You got to be born again, again, and again. Uh, mm -hmm. Reincarnation. And uh, that when Jesus said that uh, to the, the Pharisees, uh, he says, don't you know that ye too are gods? And of course, mm -hmm. he's quoting the Old Testament, so I had to go back to the Old Testament to uh, find the original meaning of that because my father made that claim. He, he says he's just as much God as Jesus. And he says, the Bible says, don't you know that ye too are gods? Uh, and then, of course, John the Baptist. So, so. They said that John the Baptist was uh, reincarnated. And, and, uh, he was originally uh, Elijah, or uh, was it Elijah? Yeah, Elijah. Yeah. He was uh, Elijah uh, must have come again. And Jesus said, "Well, that's John." And so the, the reincarnation. They say, "See, John the." Uh, John, mm. Elijah was, was reincarnated as John the Baptist. So they, they try to take things from the mm -hmm. Bible to support them. It's clever. Yeah. It's clever. It's deceitful. If you don't know how to rightly divide and don't know how to discern, and, or you don't have someone who can explain that to you, and you believe that lie, that's why they're rather called lying spirits. If you believe the lie, then they suck you away by subtlety into further darkness and what ends up happening is the more that a person continues to reject the light of christ slipping into darkness they become reprobate and they can no longer even see nor acknowledge the light of christ and this is this is we, we witness this all the time that's why they get given over to a reprobate mind because they continually rejected the revelation of christ in pursuit of darkness yeah amen all right some good comments in the chat room too. Um, all right, want to go to the third question? Yeah, number three. It's only eleven. <laughs> oh, what are we having a contest to see how many questions we can answer? <laughs> I'm gonna. I, my contest is how few questions we can answer. Oh let's, well, you'd be winning tonight. You're winning tonight. <laughs> let's let's take so much time to just really delve into each question so that we can get to very few questions. And that will frustrate for the Crips. Some, some questions you can really do that with. And other questions, maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> maybe we'll give Crips like a baker's timer that you can uh, set. <laughs> <laughs> baker's, yeah. All right. What's the next question, Ben? All right. I'm not sure if this is going to be any. I, I think it's interesting, but uh, hopefully everyone else will do. Oh, you got me worried. I'm worried now, Ben. You got me okay, worried. Well. Don't take too much time on it. If you don't, if you don't like it, I'll take the hit and I'll move right along. Um, so the question is true or false. The current location of the quote unquote temple mount is what, as the Jews refer to it as, or, uh, or slash the quote unquote dome of the rock as the Mo Muslims refer to it as is the same place where the temple built by King Solomon and later restored by King Herod was. So the Temple Mount is where the first and second temples were, and uh, the Jews believe it's going to be the place where the third temple will be as well. Mm -hmm. True or false? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, All right. Uh, did you post that, Ben? Yes, just did. You already apologized in advance for that one, huh? That's, it's kind of a technical question, but... Okay. All right. Uh, let's ask uh, Sister Angel to go first on this one. Um, undecided. Um, I, I've heard, uh, I've heard, uh, different things about it. Um, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember recently, I just heard somebody talking about the idea that the Temple Mount was, I'm trying to remember, is it Mount, 
Zion. Somebody was trying to. Somebody was making the argument that the the Temple Mount was actually. Um, I think it was um, RSE around Saturn's eye or rise or uh, on YouTube, who, by the way, has come out uh, swinging for eternal security recently, which is really great. Um, and I've talked to him and he's, uh, you know, he spent a lot of time in Israel and then I guess they, they made him leave uh, eventually. Uh, you know, he's a, he was kind of uh, uh, doing missionary stuff there, but also making a lot of videos and filming the temple project. Um, but he, what was it? I think, yes, I think he was claiming that the Temple Mount was the same as um, uh, uh, the mount that was, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was the one they were at at, the, uh, at Pentecost. So, um, but I'm undecided on this issue. I'd like to hear what Ben has to say. I've heard people make all sorts of different arguments. I've heard people say that that is not the actual Temple Mount um, and that, you know, it was it was somewhere else, you know, uh, you know not far away. But uh, I, I've, you know, honestly haven't been interested quite interested enough to uh to, to really uh, come down on one side or the other so yeah mm-hmm. i'll go yeah. next because i agree uh, with what angel just said uh, uh i i feel like it is i i don't know for sure i mean i i'm not sure what difference it makes uh unless you're a jew I and mean, if you're a jew it makes a great deal of difference to you if you're gonna do the whole uh, rituals and things like that um, I don't. I also don't put a whole lot of credence in, into what people consider prophecy, as far as there being a third temple built. I think we are the third temple, so the mark of the beast. I, I just look at that a little bit differently. So a lot of people are looking at Israel to the point where they're waiting for things to happen. Uh, they're waiting for the third temple to be built and all that stuff, and I'm not really waiting for that. But uh, yeah, I, I, I put undecided. I, I haven't looked into it. You know whether it's exactly the place. I, I've I feel like I've heard people say that it is, but I don't know. So undecided for me. Amen. Well, I, I could just uh, record that and play it back, Brother Cripps. I, a good, very good answer. Um, I, I answered leaning true, and it's because I've heard it. I don't remember even where I heard it. I heard it more than once, uh, or either whether I read it or saw videos about it or something. But so. I've been led to believe that that is the case, but I've never done any kind of research to try to confirm it one way or the other. But to me, it's a it's a fallacious uh, concept for the reason you stated, in that I, I don't look forward to a third temple uh, in Jerusalem being built. I, I think the third temple is the body of Christ, uh, as you said. Amen. But uh, as far as the location, um, it seems like it's a logical location because... Uh, if they were going to build a third temple in that location, that Dome of the Rock would have to be destroyed. And imagine how Muslims will react if their second most holy place is destroyed oh, yeah. by, the, good point. by the Jews to build a temple. Yep, absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, who's next? Crickets. I, I'll go next. I hear Sister... Angel's oh, yep. crickets, dear. I didn't mean to knock <laughs> you. <laughs> Did you fall asleep, Sister Angel? <laughs> I was saying crickets, nobody yeah. saying anything. Well, soon yeah. you're going to hear a guinea ho- uh, hollering, so uh, oh, I'm going to okay. mute because she's really loud. i got to go give them water. but <laughs> <laughs> That's what she sounds like. <laughs> oh, bless her heart. Well, I was, I'm going to say, uh, let's see. That was a tough question, the way it was worded. It was a pretty big paragraph, too. Um. If if that question, if I understood it correctly, was saying that the let's see, it says the current location of the Temple Mount, Dome of the Rock, is the same place where the temple built by King. No, I don't agree. I think that's patently false. In fact, I know it is because that the Bible says that the temple was leveled. Jesus Jesus cannot lie, and he said, "You see this great building? I tell you, there will not be one stone." left upon another and so people who know and who've researched it out have discovered that that is not any part of the temple the temple was leveled just like the bible says by titus uh, he didn't leave one stone upon the other because he was trying to get at the gold it was it, it was even in between the bricks so he literally tore it all down that is a wall left over from a roman fort 
And if I told you what they were simulating, standing there, bobbing back and forth. I was going to say the same thing. You would be, you would find it is vile. Because when they say that they're practicing Torah, they're deceiving you. They're practicing the Talmud. And they are permitted, according to the Talmud, to lie to the Goyim and tell us that they're practicing Torah. And Torah is supposed to be the Old Covenant. Well, they're not practicing Torah. They're practicing Talmud. And that is them simulating, copulating with the goddess and producing, I believe, what the emanation is, is Shekinah. Okay, and, and, and I'm not making well, this they up. They reenact what they believe God did with Shekinah, right? So it's even well, worse. Well, yeah, something along that line, but that's what they're believing is being emanated by them simulating having sex with that goddess. That so, word hijacked says Lisa, the Shekinah, the people use that all the time, especially in charismatic circles, the Shekinah glory. Yeah, it has nothing to do with God. Jesus never right. used it. I told y'all, we're, be wary when you hear all these people coming in with all this weird stuff yep. that you do not see in the New Covenant. In fact, most of it's not even mentioned in the Old Covenant at all. Amen. So be careful because we 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 yep. having some Jedi mind tricks played on us. So my, my answer neighbor, is, is certainly thinks, false. Uh, I'm sorry. My answer is certainly false. So, sorry about that, Lisa. Yeah, my neighbor just had mentioned she's a and she's a saved believer, believes the true gospel. But man, she's got a. Uh, I get he's a messianic rabbi, but a rabbi in her in her. I believe she goes to a Methodist church. Uh, that he's in there like as their pastor now. Um, they are sending rabbis all around to these churches now, teaching what they call the you know they teach in the Torah. But um, you know, and in this case, he doesn't he he does actually appear to preach eternal security from what she's told me so that's great but um so i think maybe she got a good one but it's actually very common now that in a lot of these churches they've got uh rabbis in there because actually the the prophecy that they believe they believe that uh the um the uh there's a there's a verse that they always cite i think it's well we know that you know that that it's it's actually jesus that this verse is talking about about pulling on the the wings of the garment, basically wanting to learn of the learn of the Jews, that the, 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 the Goya and the Gentiles are going to learn, of the, uh, are going to come in the last days to, to 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 ask the Jews to teach them everything that they've they've not understood and to teach them about the true God and all of that. And this is part of what they're doing. They're fulfilling that now by they, they're, they're this huge uh, campaign now to go into the churches and uh, basically it's hilarious because Christians are actually going to listen. I mean, most of the time, these are not people that actually believe that Jesus is the Son of God or that he saved us, he was the Messiah. And in the case of my neighbor, he is messianic. So, you know, uh, and like I said, he appears to preach two gospels. Well, that's great. But uh, he, um, uh, most of the time, that's not the case. And they actually uh, will have, you know, Christ projecting rabbis coming into their churches, teaching believers or Christians, at least, uh, supposedly, about, about the Bible. Now, who, what Christian in the right mind would want to learn about the Bible from those who miss their own Messiah. Yeah, explain that to me. I don't understand how that. How else are you going to receive the Noahide laws unless you're conditioned to do so? Exactly. Exactly. That's that. That was the truth. That just God left it out of the Bible by accident. He left it out that part about telling Noah those laws. You know. <laughs> well, I noticed that uh, Sister Renee uh, has an idea that's different than we've expressed. Uh, she says it's Mount Moriah is the location. So uh, uh, she's, she's stating it like it's a fact. So maybe Renee has studied it enough to know, to feel confident. Um, I'm not familiar with that. Um, all right. Uh, any more on this one? Has everybody answered? Oh, uh, ben. ben, Ben, you asked the question. We, you got to give us the, oh, the, the <coughs> authority answer. Good question. Ben. Uh, well, no, I, I, I again, uh, I, I agree with all you guys. It's not like really a, a first important for any Christian, but it is interesting prophetically, or it could be eschatologically significant. And I recently watched a, a, a documentary. It's been out for a while, but um, it was put out by um, Chuck Missler's uh, uh, um, ministry. And he worked with a guy called uh, Bob Cornuke, and Bob Cornuke does various. He he's been involved in various discoveries, like, uh, or not necessarily discoveries, but um, research, biblical archaeo archaeological research. Like he was involved in trying to find Noah's Ark, for example. Uh, he he was involved in the Mount, finding Mount Sinai. 
Uh, both of those are questionable, but uh, one one that he I think is absolutely uh, true. That he found was he found uh, he found he, he did a, a thing called a, a, a study, a documentary called "The Lost Shipwreck of Paul." So he, he basically thought he believes he found Paul's shipwreck uh, and the anchors that went with it. It's pr- very convincing, actually, uh, and very interesting. You can find it on YouTube. It's like thirty minutes, and he did another his most recent documentary. It's only about thirty minutes. I think it was released in two thousand seventeen. And he basically says uh, that he makes a very compelling case that it's that it is not the Temple Mount, the Dome of the Rock is not uh, where the uh, either Sol- so the first temple was, was the temple that Solomon built, and then it was later rebuilt by the the Israel Israeli uh, exiles from Babylon. They rebuilt it over the over the ashes of it essentially, and then King Herod in Jesus' day restored it. Um, so that's kind of the general history of it. But to Jews, it, they absolutely do consider that place the most holy place on earth. The Muslims also consider it the most holy place on earth because they believe that's where Muhammad uh, ascended to heaven from. Um, so I, I could definitely see being uh, playing into end times where uh, a, 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 you know, a temple of the Antichrist where they both agree, oh, yeah, this is the place. They both agree on this is the Messiah, so to speak. Um, I don't know. It's something to think about. Um but the Western Wall that you see Jews uh, rocking back and forth on and, and praying repetitious prayers, that's very interesting what you said, Lisa. That's fascinating. You never thought about that. I, I uh, was watching this documentary. I'll, I'll put it in the chat. It's a, it's, a very, it's a very brief documentary. I think you guys will love it. Uh, it's only 30 minutes, uh, no nonsense, and it kind of just puts a lot of takes, it just kind of put, takes you back in time, and, and it ties a lot of scripture together. I think it's really fascinating. Um, and but uh, I forgot what I was going with that. Oh, oh, what I what I thought. Okay, he makes the case that basically a very convincing case is that no, the Bible. He uses scripture to say no. The 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 Solomon's temple uh, and all the temples were in the city of David, and the city of David is just south of the Temple Mount. So the Temple Mount is on the highest hill of Jerusalem, I believe, and then just south of that, I mean, very, almost on the hillside of it is the city of David, and that's really indisputable because they found the Gihon Springs there, and, and which also makes it, its confirmation, I believe, strong evidence that the temple, original temple was there because the priests would use that that pure uh, water from the spring uh, to for w- during the sacrifices for ritual purity and for cleaning up after sacrifices and things like that. Um, and if the, if, if, the, if, the, if the temple was actually on uh, the Temple Mount or the Dome of the Rock, they would have to actually walk uh, over a mile to get to it. Um, so I don't think that I think it, there's a lot of evidence, ton of evidence that suggests that it was in the uh, the city of David, which the Bible also refers to as Zion. Um, and uh, also, I don't know who said it, but it, I, I'm very impressed uh, with all your answers. But I think it was, I think it might be Crips who said, uh, "No, no, I'm sorry, it was Lisa." Lisa, you said um, the. Uh, Jesus said that one stone would be left on uh, uh, on another, and and I believe that's I, I believe that that had not only he was just saying that oh well kind of no I think he absolutely meant that because I think it was a picture of what's going to happen to the builders who rejected uh, the cornerstone who was Christ and so their all their works all their temple building there's not one stone on another they was absolutely leveled and actually the uh, this documentary I get I'd highly recommend you watch it's only thirty minutes but they talk about Eusebius, uh, he's a third century uh, historian, and uh, Josephus both talked about the temple being utterly destroyed. The inhabitants or people that went back there uh, didn't even, they, they, they basically said it, it, they were shocked that Jerusalem was ever even inhabited because it was just ground to powder. Um, and uh, and so, if, again, for, for Jesus' prophecies to be fulfilled, I believe he was, I don't think he was, uh, you know, being uh, metaphorical there. Um, I think he was being literal. And so, what he basically, what this Bob Cornuke uh, guy makes the case for is that 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 Western Wall uh, is actually more, very likely the uh, the Roman fortress that was um, erected uh, just prior to Jesus' day uh, by Pompey. Um, so the house Roman uh, soldiers there when they took over Jerusalem, and that would again, I think it's prophetic when they'd be bowing down to it constantly. That Roman wall of their oppression, essentially, very prophetic. And just watching this documentary, it's just a lot of Jewish things that you see in there that it, it very, very, I saw a lot of spiritual truth into it. Like, for example, 
I saw these. Um, I, I talked about it before on Lisa's program where I, I observed that the pharaohs of Egypt had a cobra's headdress. And then uh, the Pharisees, their dress also had that same cobra headdress, even with down to the stripes. And then I also mentioned that the high court judges of early colonial America and England, also the wigs that they wear, they're in the same uh, serpent-like um, headdress where it flares out like a, a, a hood of a viper. And it's even down, it's even got the stripes in it. And again, that's a picture of judgment. They stand in judgment, uh, just like the, the, you know, the Pharisees did. Pharaoh did oppress the people, uh, and uh, very fascinating there. But and so I'm always really keen on the Jewish how they do things, their head, their dress they wear. And one of the things I observed, and I think you guys probably have seen this before, where they have that band around their arms, uh, really tight, it's black typically. It's really tight; it goes all the way up their arm. It's almost like it's like a snake on their arm, you know, binding them, uh, their hands essentially. Uh, you know, it's just I think it's very uh, spiritual. And then I also I saw this documentary where these Jews. We're wearing these giant, ridiculous hockey puck hats. They look like hockey pucks. I thought, okay, what is the significance of that? Uh, it's got to be something. I know there's something to this uh, spiritually. And I looked up. I, I thought, wait, it could, is it a millstone? I looked up a millstone. It looks exactly like a millstone. So they're wearing like a millstone. Like Craig said, you wear. it's better to have a millstone uh, rung around your neck and drawn to the sea. They're wearing the millstone on their head. Um, it's very, uh, very it's fascinating. Um, and also, too, in this documentary, they talk about these Jews say that uh, they believe it's the Temple Mount because of their traditions. And there's a quote that, that they say, again, very uh, prophetic. They say, if we don't have our what our parents and ra rabbis gave us, we have nothing. And they're basically referring to their traditions, and their traditions talk about the Temple Mount. And again, I, I, I thought of the verse in Matthew, or Mark 7, 7, 13, where he says, you make the word of God no effect uh, because of your traditions. Um, so... Again, just very, I, I'm absolutely convinced that, yeah, it's not the uh, temple, uh, the the location of the uh, earlier temples. And I, I would recommend you watch it just for the historical and contemporary spiritual um, lessons in that in that documentary. It, it's pretty fascinating. It just kind of puts, you know, uh, I like going back in history because sometimes the Bible just seems so, um, it just seems so far away, you know, the, the ancient days. Like, how could this, you know, I believe it, but it's like, it's hard to imagine sometimes. So I like, I like to. Uh, transport my mind back in time so for that reason i recommend it um so well um we've got someone interested uh steve asked if you would post a link for that is that possible I'll do that right now okay very good All i right. had so, uh i had one other thing i wanted to say about that right. uh ben when he was pointing out about the headdress one other thing that i observed from that is not only do they they have um really essentially what is saying the mind of the serpent they're also speaking with the words of the serpent now uh, oh, something to remember about jesus how he spoke about uh their words and uh how evil they were and how there was you know nothing but death in what they were saying and pronouncing over people and how they were full of dead men's bones white and sepulchers but uh also that the lord uh i'm, I'm not impressed with any of this temple stuff not any of this temple talk with the exception of the fulfillment of prophecy it is important for us to pay attention to that and what they're doing because uh that that uh is indicative of what the scripture says about um the wickedness of the last days but our lord dwells in temples now not made with hands and he dwells in temples that are fearfully and wonderfully made so i just wanted to, to put that out there because it seems to be too many christians all enamored with this whole concept of this third temple, yeah. which is going to be absolute blasphemy against the Lord. Yep. They, there is no such commandment for them to do that. And they are doing so in direct opposition mm -hmm. to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is blasphemy. So, you know, I just want to remind you, while it is a fulfillment of prophecy, it is a prophecy that is headed for destruction. Because the man of sin is going to manifest and sit in that temple and declare himself God. So this is not, a, it's not a good thing is what I'm trying to say. So, you know, I just, I'm puzzled by Christians get all excited. If you're excited, it should be for the return of our Lord, because when they do that, the wicked one is going to appear. So just, just totally pointing agree. that out. Yep. Totally agree. Uh, I hope, yeah, I hope I was, I, I agree with you that day. Yeah. People are way too focused, like Christians are way too focused on Israel What's happening there, and we should—it's it, it, taking their focus off Christ. And 
like yeah, like you said, that, those prophecies, those are uh, days. That, that's the day of the Lord, and uh, woe to him who looks forward to it. Big time. Next question. Does does anyone, want to, anyone want to say more before we go to another question? I uh, just that I agree very much what uh, with what Lisa said and uh, Ben added as well uh, about people focusing. Uh, believers, you know, like, I mean, there there are plenty of uh, groups out there that are collecting money for uh, for Israel, for people in Israel. And they say it's for Christians in Israel. And like, well, there, there may be a small amount of actual Bible-believing Christians, but that's not what they're referring to. They're, they're referring to, to people that are uh, supposedly worshiping Torah or uh, living under Torah, uh, uh, transitional Jews or traditional Jews. So, yeah, good question, Ben. I'm going to find anything wrong with that one. Not that I'm the judge. <laughs> All right, Ben, let's go to the next one. Okay, the next question is Hendrix. Uh, I haven't seen him in chat lately. I haven't really been looking at him lately, but uh, if uh, you're not there, Hendrix, you snooze, you lose. But this was his question, and it is true or false? Cain's offering was denied because it was vegetables instead of meat. Abel's was accepted because it was an animal sacrifice. Hmm. Okay, I'll go ahead and go. I, um, well, I don't know really why it's, uh, um, if it would have been anything that was not uh, an animal's death, a bl bl shed blood, it couldn't be accepted, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, vegetables or any other kind of work. Like, look what, what Adam and Eve did to try to uh, take things into their own hands. They covered themselves with uh, fig leaves to kind of cover their nakedness. Uh, so uh, any, any effort that man does to uh, solve the problem between man and God is not going to be uh, accepted and because there's only one solution, and that is you have to let God solve the problem for you. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it had to be an animal, but it, does, it could have been vegetables or it could have been anything else that someone's offering rather than shed blood. Okay, who wants to go next? Let me go last before I fall asleep and lose my fire. <laughs> Don't lose that fire. Lisa. I'm winding down here, guys. Um, okay. I was just thinking about this just the other day. I don't remember if it was because I saw the question in the text uh, or if because uh, I just was thinking about it. I just don't remember. But I was thinking about why. Uh, which I've already known. I mean, uh, preachers have elaborated on this, and and as far as I've seen, they're they're correct. But um, okay, if if you look at the fact that when their eyes were open, Adam and Eve, and they they covered themselves with fig leaves. Uh, I don't think that's an accident. I, I I'm still trying to tie that together with the fig tree too, as well very important and it's not insignificant but uh they they tried to cover themselves when they realized they were naked now this is this is what is tied back to to abel i mean i mean excuse me cain cain decided he was going to do his own thing okay we understand it's gleaned some kind of way from the scripture maybe from some of the other uh text in the apocrypha which i haven't finished reading yet that uh that Cain and Abel understood what was right to do. We see the Lord come down and tell Cain when he's upset that his offering was not received. He was upset. His countenance was fallen. And the Lord tells him, if you do well, I'm paraphrasing, will you not be accepted? So he's basically saying, if you do the right thing, Cain, your offering will be accepted. But he didn't want to do the right thing. He wanted to do his thing. And what's interesting was when you go back to the garden, that's what they did. They fashioned for them. They knew something was wrong. They tried to fix it. They did what the best they thought could do. And God came down and looked and said, that ain't going to cut it. And we can all extrapolate that now. We can go, fig leaves wouldn't have lasted. <laughs> you try to cover yourself with fig leaves. 
So the Lord slew an animal. This is the first time we see the shedding of any blood. This is where we get the concept of without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. We see that later on in scripture. And he covered their nakedness. It was symbolic of covering their sin. Okay, so that animal had to give up its life to cover their nakedness. Now, when we get to, to Cain and Abel later on, Cain decides, I know I don't want to do that. I want to do my own thing. And he got mad at God and ended up slaying his brother in an argument later on because he didn't want to do what the Lord had instructed. Well, you come all the way down to this, this question here. Uh, I'm sorry. Somebody tell me again what the question was. I told you I'm fading here. It was about. Yes, it is. Um, Cain's offering was denied because it was vegetables instead of meat. Abel right. Okay. Because it was an animal sacrifice. Right. So he wanted to do his own thing. And, and the Lord's like, no, that's not accepted. You have to do what I've instructed. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice. He was not being obedient. So his sacrifice was not accepted. <laughs> so uh, this is what a lot of people do. And what's interesting, uh, if you go all the way back with these ancient mystery Babylon religions, the Freemasons who want to serve God the way they want to serve God have fashioned for themselves apron suit. That's what they wear. That's what they did back in the garden. Isn't that interesting? I don't think that's an accident. Uh, <laughs> they say, oh, nope, we don't serve you guys. They're leather aprons, too. They're, they fashioned their own leather aprons. Mm -hmm. They made it's their it's own aprons. They yeah. say, we're going to serve you. We, we're not even serving, Lord. We're going we to do what we want to do for salvation. And it's, it's a mockery to God. So this is the same reason Cain was rejected. It's the same reason anybody else who doesn't come the way, which is Jesus, the perfect lamb that was slain, will be rejected. The, it's, it's, it's the most astonishing thing ever. God is not doing anything to them. They're doing it to themselves. And that's all I have to say about it. Oh, 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 I'll go. Um, um, see, uh, well, she, she kind of took the words out of my mouth, but I, I, it just hit me, uh, thinking about the fact that they, um, you know, you would almost think that they would, uh, the Freemasons would have, um, made their, uh, their aprons out of linen to, you know, keep in the tradition of, of going against God's way. But I think there may be something symbolic there about what the Antichrist has planned, um, what Satan has planned. This um this false salvation because they wear they do wear um an apron made out of of animal skins uh so it appears to me that um that's symbolic of of some uh some way that that Satan is going to try to mimic um eternal life or salvation um uh, of the flesh that uh, that man will fashion for himself uh, perhaps through technology. Something like that, because I, I was just thinking about that. It, it would have made more sense to me that they would have made their aprons out of linen, a vegetable, as opposed, or you know, or cotton or something, as opposed to animal skins. And I think that 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 might be significant because I don't think it was to symbolize, you know, the true gospel in any way. Um, and obviously, they make it themselves. So, but um, yes, I think also uh, because Lisa, uh, you know, she she hit right on what I was thinking. But also, I think it's interesting that you know. It, it, we can assume that God asked, you know, for both of them to present the same sort of offering. And that is symbolic of the way that, you know, that's all, we, you know, we don't get to have our own special offering. We don't get to present something unique before God, something that we did ourselves, something that sets us apart from anybody else. Right. And it, it's almost as though uh, Cain um didn't feel like like he like he wanted he wanted to set himself apart you know obviously I, I believe that he you know he raised vegetables and um and Abel uh you know raised uh livestock and um you know perhaps uh I used to think maybe he thought it was unfair that God the, uh, the sacrifice that God wanted was the thing that would be more convenient for him but he could have traded I mean I don't think it was about acquiring the animal I think it was uh, it was more about the fact that uh that he wanted to set himself apart somehow, which is what everybody does when they try to submit their, their works. And when they reject the true gospel, because it's a, it's a, it's a great equalizer, you know, we all present the very same thing, you know, to God um, for our salvation. And that's, you know, Christ 
uh, you know, perfect uh, finished work in his shed blood. And there's nothing, we don't get to feel special about it. We don't get to, we don't get to feel like our individuality was showcased or something like that. We don't get to try to, you know, uh, show off before God and, and, and impress him when it comes to our salvation. And, um, and I think that that was, you know, perhaps the spirit that Cain was operating in. It really wasn't just about that it was inconvenient somehow for him to, to acquire an animal. I, I think it was, it was because he, uh, yeah, he, he wanted to be special. He wanted to set himself apart. And it was, um, uh, to him, it, it wouldn't have satisfied his ego to present the very same thing that, you know, his brother was going to present, and, you know, and everybody else, you know, uh, uh, assume, you know, that I can, you know, I would at least assume would have to present, you know, uh, and it was just about, uh, his own ego at the end of the day, but that is the same thing that, uh, everybody, uh, who, uh, especially people that, you know, consciously, uh, choose, uh, a lordship salvation over, um, over the true gospel, those who contend against us uh, the most, uh, you know, avidly, um, that's the spirit they're operating in because it is not, uh, there's nothing, we don't get to brag in it. We don't get to boast in, in our salvation. We don't, it doesn't, uh, there's nothing uh, individual about it uh, except in, in Christ, you know, in, the, in Christ's individuality, he is the definition of an individual. There's only one. And, uh, and, you know, and, and we have nothing to do with it really, except that he did it for us. So, um, I would say, uh, tr yeah, it's true, uh, but to expand, so I would say true, yes, and technically that's true, um, uh, but uh, I think, you know, obviously I think it's it's deeper, it's deeper than that, but uh, I w it would be weird to answer that question as false, because that is, you know, it is accurate, the statement's accurate, so it's not complete. All right. Okay, I, I noticed that... Uh... Well, Steve's asking about the uh, the chat room uh, or the uh, hangout, just hangout room. Um, if somebody could give him the uh, the information so he knows how to get to the new one, the one that Heather and and uh, uh, Anthony started. On oh, Discord. Discord. That's Discord, yeah. Yeah, the Discord room is. Oh, he, also, he's familiar with an old one, but uh, I think everybody's using the new one now. Okay. Also, Steve, you said that uh, you thought there might be a limitation to hangouts, like 12 people. Uh, that's interesting that you'd say that uh, there was 12 people. I removed two that are not regular participants. So uh, I'm not sure if that'll help or not. So I, I give, give it a try again, but I, I will contact you and we'll work something out. That's on what? On what room is that? The hangout. Uh, he was able, unable to join the hangout tonight. Well, that wouldn't be the problem. Is Jen? Jen uh, has been on there before, and she's not here tonight. So there's an open spot anyway. Well, yeah, I don't know if he, if, he, if it's twelve simultaneous. But she's still or... added, right? Right, she's right. Still there. Like, yeah. yeah, it's a placeholder still. So I, I removed. Oh, yeah. Just you need to edit that down to just the people who are participating. Yep. So there's ten now, and so hopefully, maybe Steve, you can join now. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right, we'll have to talk to you about that. I don't know who the 10 are, but that needs to be uh, brought up to date. Uh, okay, uh, any, does everybody, has everybody answered this question? I, I didn't, I, there's not a whole lot to add, but I'll, I'll add a little bit. Um, I, I don't, the, the scripture doesn't say why God rejected it. Honestly, it doesn't say. Um, uh, it could be the blood, or it could be there were supposed to be animal sacrifices. It also could be that uh, for Abel, it was the best, it was the first fruits of his flock. And for Cain, uh, there's conjecture, there's some, some discussion about that maybe the vegetables that he offered weren't his best. Uh, also, there's other, other people that discuss, well, whether it was a sacrifice or not. Obviously, if you're, if you're tending sheep and, and you sacrifice one of your sheep, that's, that's sacrifice. If you're, growing vegetables out of the ground. I mean, is it really a sacrifice to, to, to give that to God? Um, all, all I know for sure is that God respected Abel's sacrifice and he didn't respect uh, Cain's. And uh, it could uh, be a shadow uh, of doing things the way God wants you to do it. And if you don't do it the way God wants you to do it, then it's not going to work. Um, and he also, uh, what we do know is that after the fact, a, uh, Cain was upset, and God was saying, "Why are you upset? What's the, what? You know, if you do good, then won't you be blessed? And if you don't, then uh, um, uh, sin's waiting right at the door to to devour you." 
So um, I, I put certainly false. Uh, uh, I, I think I would go more with it. It, it probably wasn't uh, his first fruits and it, it probably wasn't what uh, God told him to do. It doesn't, doesn't say that God specifically told Cain, okay, here's what you need to do. And he went against it. But I, I get that feeling from it uh, for sure. And Abel uh, seems more to be more obedient and uh, probably has, in my opinion, a closer relationship with God, and Cain doesn't seem that way. Um, and it seems to bear that out a little bit since he uh, committed the first uh, actual murder, killed his brother. Uh, so that, that would uh, bear out a little bit with evidence. That's all. Hmm. Well, I, I think that that's a very interesting point that you've made. I've never actually heard anybody make that. Yeah, me either. Yeah, that was a good point. Uh, it, about that. it doesn't specify that um, the reason it was rejected is because uh, shed blood and death was necessary. However, um, I believe not only did I come to that conclusion as I, you know, that there's a saying that uh, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Um, and when you understand the New Testament and uh, the, the necessity for, you know, a uh, shed blood and death uh and then you go back and read the old testament you can see all these things for what they really were i think and i think it's i feel quite confident and safe in saying that even though it doesn't explicitly state and explain that well this the reason it was rejected was because uh the only sacrifice that god will accept is death and shed blood and a death um, I think it's safe to, to, to say that, and uh, I'm quite confident that is the case, even though you are right, it doesn't say it in the scriptures, but some things that we, we, we realize because they are pictures and shadows, and it's unclear until you, you have the New Testament to look back in hindsight and see, the, the, then it becomes clear. Sure. Yeah, just to be clear, I don't have any problem with your view. I mean, that, that, you, that, that's your view. No, no problem at all. And then you, you, you may be absolutely one hundred percent correct, but it doesn't, it doesn't specify why. That's all. Yeah, but um, let's not represent it as my view because um, I'm just one person uh, out of uh, you know billions of people who've ever lived. Uh, it, but this, <laughs> this is, you know, my view means nothing. Uh, th th this is pretty much the church view. If you look at any commentaries and theologians throughout history, uh, that's pretty much the conclusion that uh, that you'll find if you look at a, a study of that particular portion of scripture. So, you know, I don't want to say that it's my view because it sounds like it's some unique idea that I came up with. Oh, no, I, I don't think that's at all what I meant. I'm saying that for the benefit of the audience, though. All right, uh, let me see. Uh, oh gosh, uh, Ben, my unbelievable time has flown by again tonight, brother Ben. All right, well, we got enough time for my answer. Uh, oh God, I forgot about your your answer. Yeah, let's get your answer before we start doing the summary. We don't want to forget you. Okay. Well, a couple things I think I need to keep in mind. Uh, I think uh, interesting about that passage because I I, I found I, I keep getting nuggets out of that. Um, well, one thing um, I think scripture kind of does apply. Why? Uh, again, I, don't, I think you'd have to be. I, I think it'd be very difficult for someone just to have Genesis to come to this conclusion. But now, like like I said, in hindsight, we can see it clearly. But I can't remember if it's the same chapter or the previous chapter. What we read is that uh, the ground was cursed, and that uh, uh, Adam would have to work the till the ground the sort of his by the sort of his brow. So the ground is cursed, and again. Um, uh, Cain was offering uh, God the fruit of, of of what was cursed, the ground, and so I see a direct parallel to uh, the uh, those under the law trying to satisfy God by the works to, uh, of their flesh, which is our flesh is cursed; it's under the curse of sin. So, bringing to God your works, it's 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 filthy to Him because it's it's out of the cursed ground essentially. Uh, the flesh is kind of a picture of the ground in, in some sense. Um, and also, too, is that when when Cain said to uh, uh, when Cain was rejected uh, in Genesis, uh, what is it? Genesis, yeah, Genesis four six four six six to eight. It says, "So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why is your countenance fallen? 
if you do well, will you not be accepted? I'm going to draw that back into something else that's really interesting later. So I, there's another verse in John that lordshippers use, and I think this is a direct parallel to this the statement in Genesis. It says, the Lord says, why are you angry? What, why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will, will you not be accepted? Question mark. And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it or some translation say you should master it. Well, again, that's a picture of uh, if you do well, you'll be accepted. But if you don't do well, you got it. Sin wants you and you must rule over it. Well, that's what the Jews try to do. Those who don't live, walk by faith, they try to think they can. Oh, well, I'm righteous. I've mastered my flesh. I've, I've ruled it. I, I've, it's complete submission to my will. I have no sin. And that's exactly what they believe. And again, another parallel to law versus grace. And again, he says, if, if you do well, will you not be accepted? Well, I, I, when I read this verse, I when I read John, I go, wow, this I think this is a direct parallel because uh, lordshippers use this verse against uh, us. And the verse is in, uh, is in Matt, uh, John 5, and it's 28 through 29. Jesus said to them, do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life. So those who have done good, that's equivalent to if you do well, will you not be accepted? Uh, and those who have done evil to the re resurrection of condemnation. That's Cain who it, it said, if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and you must rule over it. So again, no man can rule over their, their sin nature. Um and I, I see a, a direct parallel there. Uh, you know, Cain tried to offer uh, fruit from the what was cursed, and uh, Cain did what God told him to do. M man doesn't uh, reconcile himself with God uh, uh, based on what he thinks it needs to be done to reconcile himself with God. Uh, God tells us exactly what we need to do, and we better do it. <laughs> There's only one way. Um, so all you guys make great points. I thought I'd add that little tidbit. All right, thank you. All right, any more on this uh, last question? All right, I guess uh, we're just in time now to start uh, kind of giving our final remarks here. Hello. Um, oh, look at that. Boy, I'll tell you, you know how to cut it short because we have five minutes left or so. Uh -oh. Is that uh -oh. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -oh. That's unbelievable. Well, I'm glad you made it, but you should have been here like two and a half hours ago. Uh, yeah, well, uh, hey. Uh, uh, hey, hey, Angel. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, Jason. Hey, so glad you finally made it. Apparently, I had to accept an invite, and I didn't think of that until now. Yeah. <laughs> you have to, to, go, you're, you're have to actually go accept the invite. Even though you're sent a link, yeah, yeah, it's like you're, I, you're, out of, you're out of practice. Well, it's a good I thing. I never had to do that before, though. Well, they changed YouTube. They they changed it. Oh gosh, well, it's I a know. good thing that you're working out the bugs and getting this uh, perfected because you got a, a program tomorrow night with Renee, don't you? Yes. Yeah. So now you'll be ready for that. You'll know what to do. Yes. Yeah. That's Is that good. the afternoon? Yes. Afternoon, three p.m. So yes. uh, what we do, what we do, Steve. I'm glad you were here for the pretty much the whole program, or at least listening and participating in the chat room. Uh, now that we're we try to finish up at midnight Eastern time, and uh, now it's time okay. for our, our our closing remarks here. And you've been paying attention, so while you're here, I'll start off with you. And why don't you oh, give goodness. us a little, a little summary of, of of what you thought of the entire discussion tonight? Okay. Uh... I, I can do that if you'll help me. Uh, if you could just reread the questions and I'll give you my one sentence answer. All right, Ben, do that, will you? And please, Steve, don't take a whole lot of time on that first. I, I won't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the question or true false statement was, King's offering was denied because it was vegetables instead of meat. Abel's was accepted because it was an animal sacrifice? Um, uh, simple answer, uh, it was because it was meat. And although 
basically the, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So uh, there's a whole lot to it, but that's the basics of it. Okay. So next question. You can go backwards, sure. Ben. Sure. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, you all, I would do all of them. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I was going to do the one sentence. <laughs> yeah, three okay. or four questions. Ask him each question so we can get a quick answer from him. Okay. First, next question was: I routinely recite the Lord's Prayer. True or false? Uh, oh yeah, that one. Uh, I think that's a good structure of how to pray. That these are things that should be. Uh, in uh, in your prayers to have, but you don't have to follow it religiously. And the whole key word that I focused on in the chat was vain. Um, I know I did this on one of my live streams a long time ago uh, where I really focused on that word vain, that it's it, vain. What do you think of when you think of a vain person, someone who is only focused on the external, yeah. which actually goes into the context of what Jesus was talking about, about praying in front of people and only doing it for the external. Amen. So the vanity it mean, or empty, superficial, empty, without purpose. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it because you, you're trying to get an answer from God. You're trying to have, you know, like Luke mentioned, the the woman who went to the judge over and over and over and over and over again. She was repetitive, but it wasn't vain. It, mm -hmm. There was purpose behind it. So, yeah, okay. I'm All done. Right. Sure. Yeah, was, was there another question, Ben? There was yeah. one other one or two. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I agree. There's a wide gulf between vain repetition and being um, persistent. Um, okay, so last question I think it was uh, that we covered is, the current location of the Temple Mount slash Dome of the Rock is the same place where the temple built by, by King Solomon was. Um, watch the video. <laughs> That's my answer, because y'all said it, because the Wailing Wall, if that's part of the temple, then Jesus lied. Yeah. And I don't believe Jesus lied, so that Wailing Wall cannot be part of the temple. And that's the video that uh, the link that that uh, was posted in the chat. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. yes I, uh, I I I was like I saw this video. Angel started talking about him. Like I know what video you're talking about. And then you mentioned it. And then you have the link. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> this is great. Because yeah, that that the the wall is part of the Ro the, the exterior of the Roman uh, I think it's the Roman centurion um, base that was attached to the outer wall of Rome, and so yeah, that the where they found it is perfect for everything, including the city of David, the the river. The river actually, where they found it under, underground, the river actually flows right by where they would uh, ha have the animals uh, held down and everything. There's even, like, uh, some of the the dirt that once, now that they've had it somewhat excavated, like, the dirt is still stained red where they were sacrificing. Yeah, you guys should watch the video with Oh yeah, it's pretty great. Good. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's amazing. Uh, okay, uh, there was one more. Oh. Yep, there was one. Yeah, there's one more question. Oh, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so one more question. It is hypnosis is a safe and reliable means of getting in touch with the subconscious and the true self. No. No. Yeah. Good answer. Okay. Uh, I have one last question for you, and that is that uh, uh, you know you're. This, I think this may be the first time you've seen the Friday night program and the format that we're using with the true false questions and, and then uh, taking uh, answers from everybody in the chat room and posting them to see, did you see the results? Uh, were you able to watch and see the pie chart and see how the breakdown was for the answers? Uh, and then if you did, uh, what, what do you think of the format of the Friday night program? That was cool. Yeah. 
All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, sorry you weren't able to be here in the beginning and elaborate on each point uh, the way that we wanted you to, but uh, I'm sure there will, be, there will be a next time. <laughs> That's okay. Well, you, you realize if I had, we would have been here till like one in the morning. That's uh, true. That is or, true. Or, or, or later, or we would have been here uh, only gotten like two questions done. That's true. Remember, we went six hours that time, where it was you, Liam, Matthias, man, I'll never. <laughs> yes. We, went, we talked for six hours. That was, that yes. Was great. Yeah. Embarrassing. Well, Embarrassing, yeah. though. So, <laughs> I have the I have the dirty task of trying it was to, dawn. to uh, moderate this program so that <laughs> I, I keep everybody uh, get everybody equal time without uh, you know letting uh, any one person like uh, take over the program. So I won't let you do that, Steve. Don't worry. Okay, everybody's okay. heard it. He said he's not going <laughs> to let Steve take over. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. All right, let's move on now to get uh, the summary remarks from uh, Sister Angel since she's uh, all ready to go. All right, yeah. Oh man, I'm just uh, I'm glad you got to you got to come in even in for the last few minutes. It's good to hear your voice again, man. I'm definitely going to be listening uh, just listening tomorrow uh, when you're when you're on Renee's show, um, and uh, I really I really uh, hope that you're that you I'll get to be on a broadcast with you here soon. But uh, um, I will. Uh, I'm gonna give uh, whoever has your uh, your your number, or whatever. I'm gonna give them my my new number because I, I I got like I broke like two phones in a row, and then I finally got this this new phone. So I, I don't have any of my old my old stuff. Um, but okay. uh, but yeah, it was really it was really great tonight, and I, I do apologize for sort of contributing to the ridiculous uh, amount of time we spent on that first question. Um, but uh, I, I, uh, my phone looks like it's about to die, and I think there's a Bigfoot out. In the in in my yard somewhere, I'm gonna call it a bigfoot. It's something oh. making noise out there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it is? It probably freaks me out. It could be anything. But um, anyway, uh, I I just I love you guys. I do apologize, Chris. Please please forgive us for that. It, I did not realize how long we've gone on. Um, but uh, but it was. Uh, I thought the questions were great, and um, uh, hopefully uh, Jen will be uh, be back with us next week. And uh, I love you guys. And uh. I will. I think we're gonna have a show tomorrow, so I'll let Lisa tell you about that. But um, uh, I don't know if uh, if Steve has been listening to those, but I should definitely uh, check it out tomorrow at uh, eleven eleven o'clock, three p.m. Uh, Eastern. Cool. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, that's on Renee's channel, right? So it'll be uh, like our Thursday throwdown tomorrow. Yeah. Let me uh, let me say something real quick before we uh, move on in the, the, our final remarks here. I just need to respond to something in the chat room. Uh, um, uh, every every person uh, on this panel, in fact, every person on uh, any of the church panels, uh, has been invited to to join the panels. Uh, not one person has ever asked to join the panel. Uh, they. They've waited, and uh, when the time was right, uh, and the situation was right for them, then we recognize that, hey, this is a good time to include someone. Uh, and, and based upon our judgment as to the qualifications and, uh, uh, and, and how will it fit in with the, the program dynamic. So all these things have to be considered, and so I'm asking everybody to do is don't invite yourself it's, it's like the story that Jesus told about the, the man at the, uh, I think it was a banquet, and uh, he wanted to go to the front, and he was told, no, sit in the back and wait, and then maybe you'll be invited to the front instead of having to be embarrassed by automatically, you go up to the front, you take your own initiative, and then you have to be told to and escorted back because you were not invited there. So I'm just asking everybody, uh, uh, if you want to be on a, a panel, uh, at least in the CES programs, uh, just wait. Maybe someday there will be an uh, opportunity for you. Uh, if you want to express an interest in it privately, uh, then we can discuss it. But it's not really proper for anybody to be inviting themselves to join the panel publicly the way, um, I, the way you just did. What, what you can do is if you make your own uh, content a little bit, see that that gives 
there's been problems before when Luke, uh, like I think once they're trying to let people call in openly, and then there's there you can't always since this is a live show, some really bad things can happen if you uh, let people on the show while it's live where you've never really talked to them before and you don't really have a feel for them. So if you if you have your own videos or your own, you know, uh, where you have like a live stream, like hangout type thing, then uh, Luke can get a feel for what you're like and, and you know, how, how, how you'll behave and whether you're, gonna, you're liable to say something totally off the wall crazy uh, while it's live. Um, and that makes it a little bit easier. Uh, to, to do that but th but there's a reason it's not like because you're just you're not popular or something it's because of this is a live show and because uh, it, it, things could go really bad uh, really quickly if you if you let people on that you're not really familiar with mm -hmm. thank you angel and th this particular program the Friday night program when we first started doing it uh, I tried to uh, just post the link so that anybody could join and it turned out to be quite a disaster um, because uh, some of the people on it, they, they frankly had not been vetted. And, and I had to deal with some people that were uh, really um, um, created nothing but problems. And I, I was really stopped the program. I, I, it was over until a bunch of people told me, please, let's continue it. Let's not let that problem stop us. So uh, we're, we've continued, but I realized that it was a mistake just to open up and let everybody join the, the the panel. People have to be vetted, and everybody here on this panel and all of our panels, they've been vetted. Some of these people I've known for many many years, uh, and know them so well that I'm quite comfortable in uh, working with them. So please don't invite yourself. It's really you, you should know better than that anyway. It's not, it's never proper to invite yourself to to something. Um, all right. Uh, let's go back to the summary remarks here. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, Angel, could you give us your summary? I just went. I just went right before oh, right before that. that so. so let me see. We have Steve and Angel. Brother Cripps, why don't you give us your uh, closing remarks? Well, I still had fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I... I uh, I love all the questions. Uh, I even loved the first question about the Lord's Prayer, and uh, just it just seemed like it it went on a little too long, as I already stated. So uh, I hope everyone has a little fun with that rather than being upset. But uh, it was good. Um, you keep the questions coming. I mean, those are all part of it. Um, I'm glad everyone except uh, Jen was able to show up, and uh, just so everyone knows, she's fine. She's tired. That's all. And uh, she does plan on being back next week. And she would uh, hate to have missed you, Steve, but uh, uh, definitely get up so you get a chance to say hello to her as well. Um, I haven't talked to you in a long time. So, I mean, uh, my number is still the same if you uh, ever want okay. to um, But I'm glad to see you. I really am. Uh, it's been a long time. And that comment I made in the chat about you, I'm glad to see your life, was a, a thinly veiled passive aggressive comment, just so you know. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say good night to everyone in the chat, and I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend, and look forward to next Friday. Mm -hmm. And tell uh, tell Jen that we missed her very much tonight. Okay, I will. Thank you. I will tell her All that. Right. Okay, Sister Lisa. Yes, everybody. Um, just wanted to say good evening. I hope everybody has a very wonderful rest of the weekend. It was indeed enjoyable to talk to you all. I had fun, even though the first question did go on for an hour and a half. See? So. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. Hold on. I'm not saying that. I'm ribbing you with that. Oh, okay. Because to me, I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we go on for an hour and a half talking about something. I had fun talking about it. I think everybody's insights was wonderful and Okay. I wasn't bored with it at all, but I, I can understand if you were. I mean, okay. some of us, you know, we're only we're only sucking on pablum and uh, and and the sincere milk of the word here. So <laughs> <laughs> those who are more spiritual have to have that strong meter. They get agitated. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> trying not to, trying not to choke on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's okay. I understand, but no, I had fun. It was it was a good time tonight. I liked everyone's answers. Thought they were very good, Sister Angel. I didn't get to chime in because I I couldn't get to my mute button fast enough. But uh, 
love the the uh, insights you had on the last. I think it was the last question. Yeah, it was really good. Thank you for that. And and, and er, as well as everyone. Uh, also, just wanted to send a reminder out that uh, tomorrow night, yes, we indeed have a broadcast. I'm sorry if you guys didn't uh, realize that. Um, my apologies. I thought, you know, I was clear that it was last week. I was with my family. And this yes, week, I did know that. Resumed. That's what I was saying. Oh. I, okay. I, I think Steve got confused because uh, I, I was saying uh, to, uh, to, I was telling him to, that, that if he hadn't heard our show, to, to check it out um, because uh, uh, he might even be, uh, you know, maybe he could come on. It would be, it'd be really cool to add him to the conversation. Um, but uh, uh, it, might, it might go on a long time, but that's okay. Um, because <laughs> he and I can talk. We can talk. Uh, yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but, yeah. So you no, guys I, have I, another I, show tomorrow, too? Yes. yes. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing a broadcast it. that's called Late Night with Lisa and Friends. You love it, Steve. And yes. you should check it out. We have a... Uh, Special Late guest tomorrow night, who's going to be on. Late night with Lisa and friends. Uh, it starts at eight p.m. Okay. Eleven Eastern. Yep. Yes, oh, eleven oh p.m. My. Eastern. Yes, late. <laughs> late night. I may not be awake. <laughs> That's okay. It's on replay. So just check it out at your convenience. Yeah. Uh, but, but if I am, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. Yeah, sure, no problem. There's we no go pressure. On late. <laughs> we go, we go. Yeah, we like go late. Three. We go about four hours. <laughs> Normally, and, I like being awake at that time, but uh, at this time, that's what I thought. but yeah, but I, I've this this week I've been running super early in the morning, so like yeah, I, I'm like getting up at five. So oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good though. That's preferable. Well, I, don't, I don't like it. I, I don't like it. <laughs> you, you'd be just about the time we're finishing up then. Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. All right. So, but, let's, Mr. Lisa, what, what is the subject of your uh, program uh, tomorrow night? Well, I was uh, asking the Lord about that, and uh, he asked me to please speak about the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ tomorrow. Awesome. So we're going to be talking about grace. And also, uh, Brother Fitz Houston will be back. He is yeah. committed to be on the second half of the broadcast. And this time, what we've worked out is rather than try to have him do something live, he has a couple of uh, special uh, projects he's going to share with us uh, that he's going to provide a producer for everybody to take a listen uh, during the broadcast so that you can enjoy it and hear it in its in his full glory <laughs> to God without uh, any interruptions, thankfully, hopefully, in Jesus' name. <laughs> so that's tomorrow at 8 p.m. on my channel for the Most High Jesus. I hope to see you all there. Awesome. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Um, I also would like to uh, make sure everybody's aware that uh, Sister Renee's program that normally is Thursday uh, it will be tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific, I think. Is it 3 p.m. Pacific or 3 p.m. Eastern? 3 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. 3 p.m. Eastern? Okay. Mm. 3 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, she said the, the subject of it is a program on Netflix called Cuties. And when oh. she told me about it earlier today, I wasn't familiar with it. So I decided don't, I would check it out. No, don't be yeah. familiar with it. Don't watch it. I watched the watch it. episode. Uh, and I got to like 43 minutes into it. I just couldn't handle it anymore. It really is a, a, a bad thing. So I'm glad that she's gonna uh, have a program to bring this to everyone's yeah. attention. So don't miss, don't miss that. If if you don't miss, if you if anybody misses that show tomorrow, I want to make this clear. Um, I've done some research. I have never watched it, but you could technically be held legally, uh, legally. Uh, responsible c criminally for watching yeah. that movie um, yeah. or show or whatever, because uh, it's technically uh, according to nearly every state, the, the laws are, are almost identical in every state. Um, and the, the lawyers that I've watched talk about this, um, uh, that basically it's a, it's it's a class four uh, crime against mi uh, sex crime against minors because they have uh, used employed uh, minors 
doing sexual things. So um, it's it's very illegal for them to have made it, produced it, and for you to receive it in this country. Just watching it is it could could end up could could make you end up getting charges. And I think that's part of the whole, not just the sexualization of children, but um, to entrap good meaning Christians trying to find out what all the fuss is about so that they can like, is this good for my kids to watch or not good for my kids to watch? And it's just, no, just don't because you don't want to, you know, you don't want that. Uh, you don't want that trouble. So, but yeah. All right. Okay. So you've got uh, a lot of uh, good things to do. Two programs for you tomorrow. And again, don't forget to join us Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern time on the same channel for our our Sunday church service uh, for the church of the eternally secure. Thanks to everybody on the panel tonight. And thank you everybody in in the chat room. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior, God, Jesus.